The following show is for mature audiences only. Chai City Sports. The Tape Never Lies. The Tape Never Lies Network. The Tape Never Lies. The tape Never Lies. Starts now. I, I can hear, I can hear my guy Phil Atoshin in the back of my head right now because Rap Doctor Phil pointed this out in the tape never lies. What's up, Doc? Can we rock? What's up, Doc? Can we rock? What's up, Doc? Can we rock? And when you have a agenda, I want to be the best play caller. I want my offense to be great. You lose perspective. And you never find your identity. Big plays are nice. They're good. We need more of those. Weird as shit. Just keep it simple, stupid. How many times have we said it? It's all about fundamental football there. I have, I'll be completely honest. There, there's times I understand when you have to, to buck the trend and, and be aggressive. Try to end it and go for the throw. But you go down shooting with your best weapon. You don't sit them on the sidelines. We saw, Phil, we saw a second and long today with Mac and Robert Quinn off second the field. Second and 24. We got to do better, man. Chicago ain't that good. I still say they ain't that good. And we can't beat them. How do you call timeout, get a delay? How do you have 12 men on the field twice? How? Big plays are nice. They're good. We need more of those. How about the mayor? <laughs> Let's go! We, we know that across the board on offense right now, there's, there's different things that we can get better at. And, I mean, they're 4-1. The record speaks for itself, but they've won very close games down to the wire in those victories. So for me, is this a good team and they're going to maintain this through the rest of the season? Or is this one of those fake teams and this is going to collapse sooner than later? I can't wait to find out. I'm on the ground with a heart panic. I felt like Chris Farley, like, boom, it's number fucking three. No problem, just having a heart attack. This guy is an arena league sham shoe salesman motherfucker. Oh, no, that's what he is. You have what I rap in the open. Critical of Nagy because the talent he's been dealt. That's the lyric. Oh, the tape doesn't lie. Oh, the tape doesn't lie. Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest man. Keeping it 100. And so the Bears are sending their compensatory fourth round pick to Jacksonville for Nick Foles. Chicago Bears sweat. Cold commit. Yes, 
Guess who's back? The two dudes that kept it real. Love. Dynamic duo that you love, the smartest man in Dr. Phil. Breaking down the film, never a problem, kick it straight. Most shows focus on stats, we focus on the tape. We keep it in a hundred, never running east to west. We coming with that truth, cause that's what our fans expect. Cut off the freaking anchor, move it forward to be free. But don't you worry, Shane's got the dumbest tweets. It ain't no secret, Phil and Shane got some haters. But now the mouth stuck like the two and now and later. Debaters, stars get kicked like Coach Tabor. Cuts had to be made, we added a barber moderator. Up and down, boys got you double checking. Sad sack strolling like a full drunk texting. Flexing on the truth, cause you know they'll never change. Real, recognize real, that's what you get with Phil and Shane. 100's what we do when we're breaking down the bears. Fuck a play or a captain, all of the up there. The team never lies. The truth, you see, we lies, we lies. So there's no babies like Maybelline. Straight to the truth with acumen and facts. We got a sad nerd, but it's not just giving nerds that car crash. Big impact like Max Sat. Every Wednesday night you got the smartest man in the back. Now we know you're smiling like a fat kid with fun dip. We're back better than ever and we're keeping it a hundred. Keeping it a hundred, baby. Keep it 100. Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest man in the world. Yo, this is Claudia the Barber, and this is Shy City Sports keeping it 100. The Bears, 5 and 1. We're like Jon Snow, Kings of the North, baby. So, you know what? The defense showed up again. You know, the offense made the plays when it needed to make them. And, uh, you know, that's all you can ask for. We got a big game coming up on Monday. Uh, so, you know, we also got a great show coming for you. We got. Sean Sierra from Sports Zone Chicago coming on. So let's bring in the guys. We got Draft Doctor Phil and Shane Marsaw. Where are they? There they are. Claudio. There they are. What up, boys? Claudio What's looking like on? he's in the uh, college <laughs> dorm tonight. <laughs> I know. I'm still in my house. My my new shop is a little. Oh, hey. Smoke weed every day. <laughs> Couldn't wait to put that up, Shane. <laughs> Gotta start the show off, right, Claude? Uh, Fuck it, right? yeah, why not? Why not? What, why a, not? what a night. Did you like late? the open, Claudio? You're usually the greater. Oh, the open was great. The, of course. Of you, course, always. Is that an A, A plus, it was hilarious, B, dude. B plus? I, the shoe salesman yeah. clip got it for me, man. That you, shoe salesman. You know what I took out, yeah, of, the, that was out of the open I, I was chuckle, Nate Burrows. You know, they're five and one. But th this team is winning close games. <laughs> that's what you're Isn't supposed that to do. That's, that's what you're supposed to do, Nate. <laughs> How many times do you hear, you know, these guys, the team goes out and boat races another team three or four times and they're like, but can they win the close ones? Can that's exactly win? what we're doing. Can they that's win what I, the I close said, ones? I sent out a tweet and I will stick to it. All the Bears haters... People like Peter Bukowski, Michael Kist, you'll be hearing from both of them later, <laughs> sending out their hate towards Chicago, you know, saying winter is coming. You, bre you better pray to the football gods Chicago doesn't figure out their offense. That's got all I'm going to say. Got a lot of Game of Thrones references. Yeah. Tonight. Pray to God got, Chicago doesn't figure out the offense. Got a Wild Wings shirt on. Game nice. of Thrones. Look at that. Yeah. I got my the Tate Kings Never Lies How? Network shirt on, Claudia. I know, I'm Wait. waiting for that. See, I'm, Alex, from, look. I'm promoting what came out today, see? Yeah, the Tate Never Steve, Lies came Steven out today. It. Thank Steven you, Taven Steven. Yep, the Patreon channel is open, www.tapeneverlies.com. The 40 minutes of analysis, coaching clinic, go over there. That's where you're going to get it all. We appreciate you guys. The Patreons are fired up, and we're going to hear from a bunch of them tonight. 
Yeah, and hopefully there's a plumber out there. We need a plumber. <laughs> I like that line in that there. That was, that was a good line. You know, when I'm doing the tape breakdowns, I just go into a zone. I mean, it takes a, Shane was witnessing because we had a great swag meeting last night with a bu our swag team. So that is coming like the North is coming, Claudio, right? The one Another winter's Game coming, of Thrones. Yeah. Winter's coming. That's winter's it. Coming, Sorry. Yeah. The winter's coming. Yeah. But, yeah, the swag is coming. We had a great meeting, and I was literally cutting tape in the meeting while they're talking as I'm listening to it. And it's it's a long, arduous process to, to break it down. But when I get to the point where it's time to just narrate it, I go into what you've witnessed when you were a player for me back in the day. When I'm just yeah, was... making jokes and teaching all at the same time. So that's tough why those, those are not, it's just one take and then we go. And I can't thank you guys enough for the amount of people that believe in me and Shane and this network. And now that our big fans of Claudio's segment cut it out, we have Ooh, who would have thunk, thunk it? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I think everybody loves Claudia. Smoke weed every day. Always smiling, baby, especially when we're five and one. Always. Listen, I try to answer a lot of the Patreon and huge fans of of what we do here, because Dieter is on the practice squad, so he is with the Bears. He's working his way to get the opportunity, but we know Shane. And this brings me to a great point. We know the Chicago Bears, when it comes to opportunities, have some, some sort of political policy. And it seems like just with Riley Ridley and the Anthony Miller stuff that I, I show you as a coach, that is a, a fucking, that's a smoking gun. Exactly, Maria. Miller and Leno are right there on the tape. It doesn't lie. It never does. And to see them going out there and play like that when I'm watching them, I mean, that one play I had to have out there. And I know they hear about it and they see it. And you could cut it and tag them in it. I don't care. You're a professional. Komet, Cole Komet is running with the football. And to see your teammate more concerned about getting a pass thrown to them than throwing a block, yeah, Can't that's a reflection of the fucking head coach. No, you see that on tape instantly, Phil. You send out the APB for Miller to, to, to come to the principal's office. Exactly. You fucking handle Without that a immediately. Doubt. I don't give a shit if there's no one in the stands. Yeah. You're a professional athlete playing a game that means everything to these people that are paying NFL Sunday ticket, game pass across the pond, wherever you're listening from. It's ridiculous that you don't have enough passion and heart and desire to play this game that you're making hundreds of thousands of dollars. Hundreds of thousands, millions for some of these guys. And that's, and that's really the disheartening thing. And when you hear me critical of Nagy, it's because of that. It's because of... That starts... That's that's the starting point. You can't get... I don't give a shit. He's got his locker room in order? Yeah. If they were 1-5, do you think he's got his locker room in order? You're 5-1 and one and you got guys walking and loafing. You got shitty play calls, confusion, timeouts, and I got people telling me, well, they've got five wins. Why are you critical of him? Look at his record, yeah? Mike Marks has a fucking winning record. Are you critical of him? You want him your head coach? It's not about that. It's about culture. I'm, you can be friends with players, but there's a line. It's like a parent, like a mom that's best friends with her daughter. At some point, that daughter is going to be trouble. You can't be friends. You love them. Love them to death, obviously. But there's got to be a line, and it's not there. I'm telling you, if this, how many, how long have I called Leno out, Shane? How long? It's been years. It's been 
Oh, man. Phil, you called him out, I believe, when he got his contract extension. You were you were questioning it. I know a lot of people saw the money initially, and just like always, they're it's not their money, but that's exactly what they're usually worried about most when it comes to a contract. I mean, his for the way that his play is, the contract is... You know, he, he didn't deserve it. I think that they thought that there was still some upside there, so they were going to invest in him and try to keep it low. But it's regressed so much since that point. And just to reemphasize what we always talked about here, Phil, he's a guy that started at the bottom. He was a seventh-round draft pick with, yeah. uh, what, I'd be, I think that was the Kyle Fuller draft, maybe, when he came in. Or the year before, he was Phil Emery's guy, seventh round Phil draft Emery's guy out of Boise. So, but he came in, he showed some promise, and he he didn't look as passive as he does now, Phil. But now he got fat on the contract, and you Absolutely. see it in his play. You see it. He's he's disinterested. He's disinterested. That's right, and it's it's hard, like because people don't see the game like I do. So, in meeting some of these people that I truly love. It's not It's not a shot at anybody. It really isn't. It's the reality of the truth, as I always say. There's a reality of the truth, and then there's people that try to talk through it like they know football. But one thing I can attest to, and anybody who knows me, I mean, I think I've proven my resume with putting my name on the work that I throw out to hundreds of millions. Because Shane has numbers. So when I say millions, it's not a lie. So how many people are seeing this imitating me, making, now they're changing course, people unfollowing the network? <laughs> that's, that's classy. Classy. Classy stuff. Like, the reality for me, Leno not going to the principal's office, Shane, to use your analogy, is... It's, I can't even comprehend it. My father calls me this week. One second. He goes, yeah. Phil, I feel so bad for that kid, number nine. He is such a fuck. He's, he's single-handedly helping you win, despite the coach and despite the JV left tackle you have. How he continues to start, and he doesn't know our roster that well. He's learning it so he could do some stuff for Patreon and have a show. So he's studying the roster. And then he's that guy would never, he would be done. I would tell the GM, I can't play this guy. Don't care that you paid him. At what point does the team matter more? At what point? That's the problem with this. And the record is one thing. You're... You're a block punt away from losing. Because some of you who, who aren't in Patreon, 40 minutes of it that I broke down, I didn't put this play in the free version, but we almost have a block punt near the end of the game after Allen Robinson's drop and the wobbly throw, whoever you want to put it on, that's fine. But... We almost get a block. How, does that change? The, yes, it changes the whole game. Now you lose. Does the story change? That's football. That's what records don't tell the story yet. See me about the winning record at the end of the year. Then we'll talk records, what they mean. What I'm seeing on the tape, as this network is defined, Shane, it doesn't lie, never does, is. Horrific. You're winning despite your head coach. You're winning despite your offense. That defense is championship quality defense. I mean, the referees took away two fucking defensive touchdowns in that game. Yeah, it's happening weekly with Eddie Jackson. That's the sad part. But, Phil, one thing that mm -hmm. I want to bring up, again, with Charles Leno, I mentioned him being a seventh-round draft pick. Can you sit here with a clear conscience and say – that Arlington Hambright would be worse? No. I can't. I can't. No. I love that argument from people. I love that argument from people. When they go out of their way and they say, well, who are you going to play? Who are you going to play? Who is Charles Leno? Who is, you don't, who is Darnell Mooney?
Mooney, remember? Who's Darnell Mooney? Well, that's what football that's, is. But, Phil, what is the one thing that we've always heard from this coaching staff and every coaching staff in existence when there's an injury? Oh, you know, we're not going to focus on that. It's the next man up philosophy. It shouldn't just come into play for injuries. It Thank should come you. into why did, play. Why did it? Yeah. Go ahead. Why did it no. come into play with Mitch? Exactly. With why did it come into play with Mitch and not your tackle, your wide receiver? You Listen, one thing, and I'll shut up, Shane, for Way Marie. I'll shut up. Here's my truth. My uncle Sam Tigliano coached the Cleveland Browns. He was the head coach, the cardiac kids. Look him up. He said to me, Philip, you'll be shocked at how many shoe salesmen are in the league coaching. Fans put their faith in them like a priest. Have you seen some of these stories about priests? So, we believe because someone told us that this guy's good. But then the proof is in the fucking pudding. The proof is in the pudding. You, When's the last time, Shane, in your mind that you could say our head coach, any of them, our head coach coached a fucking great game? It's been a long time. I mean, I, I, I think that there's... I think that there is some positives with Nagy that you have to bring into play here, Phil, but this is something that we've seen from the Chicago Bears, even through, you know, you go back to Lovey Smith, and that was the most successful coach that we've had in a while. Right. It was, it was always the same way. It was, we needed four quarters strung together on offense. It's been the same thing year after year after year. Politics were played back then. And there's always been one consistent piece to all of this, and that's what's up top with ownership and yep. the team president. We're never going to change that. You can't <laughs> revolt and change and make the McCaskies sell this team. They're not going to launch Ted Phillips. Right. If it was ever going to happen, it would have happened 20 years ago because it needed to happen. But that's the thing. But you can't, you know, Olin Krutz. And I don't know if you want to break some news with that, Phil. You want to go ahead and tell him. I wasn't, but I will. If yeah, you want. why not? We'll tell him. We'll fire up. And fire we're up fired up to announce November 4th, keeping it 100. The Who I think should be in the Hall of Fame, speaking oh, of Lovey absolutely. Smith. The center, the captain, number 57, Olin Krutz is going to jump on, keeping it 100 with us. And obviously, the offensive line focus is going to be there. And nobody keeps it 100 like we do with a guy like Olin Krutz coming on, keeping it 100. So November 4th, Olin Krutz will be here. Put up, put up two comments. Michael Tran, you can't bench someone that you don't have a backup for. Hmm. Guess what? Do you know Spriggs? Do you know how he could play? No, you don't. Jason Spriggs was a great, a second round pick coming out of Indiana who got injured. Me, I haven't seen him play. You haven't seen him. But we know that the reality of the truth is anything is better than what you're seeing at left tackle with the Chicago Bears now. You can't so say that you, can't you, can't say that you say don't have a backup because you, you're you, guessing. He's getting paid. You're totally guessing. Right. You're totally guessing. He it's made the 53 for a reason. Yeah, there's a there's a lack of quality on at offensive line across the league. But these guys, you never know how they're going to respond, Phil, when they get exactly. their Exactly. Someone Char gets the light as, turned on. As Great bad point. as 72 is, that's, that's why he got to where he is. That's why he got... The contract extension, seventh round draft pick coming in. But Phil, to go back to what Olin was saying, this has been this has went back, like I said when I brought up Lovey Smith. This has been the, the issue in Chicago for so long. Exactly. Everything Kevin. is everything is focused on one side of the ball, and you can see it. You know, if you want to find the issue, follow the money. Follow the money. What did Olin say when he was on with us? He said, I went up and I talked to Jerry Angelo, sat right at his desk, and he's like 
Colin, start. you gotta you gotta watch the game of this offensive lineman right here. And it was Frank Omiel. And he Frank. he made he made Olin watch one game. And Olin goes, Yeah, that's one game. What what do I care? It's one game. He needs to do more. He's like, Jerry, we are not going to do anything this year with our offensive line. We're fucking terrible. His words, exactly, to the general manager. And what happened that offseason? They went outside and they signed Julius Peppers to the defense that had Lance Briggs, Brian Erlacher, Charles Tillman, the whole crew that we all know. And what did the offense get? We got Frank Omiel. And then you wonder why this team struggles so much on offense and there's zero consistency there. Yes, quarterback situation has always been there offensive line's been in shambles wide receiver has been an issue forever oh you go out God. and dump a ton of money Moshe into Muhammad back in the day Moshe exactly Muhammad, Bernard Berrien yeah Jeff you... Graham those guys the other thing I saw we had our the voice the voice of the tape never lies network where was he Claudio had his point up Get him back up, my boy Lawrence Fleming, Claudio. He had a great point. It's about effort. There. This is the voice of every promo, everything we do. That's my boy, my guy right there, Lawrence Fleming. By the way, happy birthday, Lawrence. He had a birthday, victory birthday at least. That's my guy. He's right. Imagine being a, a head coach and your plays, your concepts, are taught and then you go out into the football field and you make mistakes i can live with a mistake going full speed i'm coaching five and seven year olds and, and tonight all we did was run sp full speed because when they snap the ball they all run towards the hand it's like i'm coaching out of my mind i'm so exhausted from cutting tape and coaching little kids but it's it's taught you gotta go a hundred Miles an hour at least. Don't make a mistake going half-ass. I put it on tape for these people of the world that are talking on the radio. David Montgomery sucks. What's this dude? Forgot his name. He's on ES Jay something on ESPN. Jesus Christ. He's new on with Cap. What's his name? Oh, Jay Hood. Jay Hood. Hood. Jay Hood. He's got to stay in the hood. Because he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Montgomery can't find a hole. No one can find a hole! No one can! Because it's ha every play there's a breakdown. Physically or mentally. It's, it's like rolling the dice. It's playing craps with this offensive line. And by the way, you fired Harry Heastand. You brought in Juan Castillo and we saw the first couple weeks. I'm like, holy shit, they're getting it. Yeah, we got the walrus technique going, but he's going to get on his ass. Maybe the COVID sh shit and he's not being there on their asses. Maybe that's it. I don't know, but it is bad. It is bad. And I know things get, you know, when you hold, when you hold players accountable, we're going to have a guy that played college football on the same level as I did, a 1AA level tonight. He knows. He could speak on when shit, a coach points out your lack of effort in front of your peers. There is no, nothing. I would rather run naked through Manhattan than sit there and have my coach question Nobody my, that. my integrity or accountability. I'm just saying, it's, it's sad. And, and nothing's being done. The media's not saying it. You know what the media's doing? In Chicago, they're blaming David Montgomery. And I heard a fan of ours, Shane, went on the score. I wish I, I didn't have time to pull the audio, but one of you had sent it to me. My mind is blank, so forgive me. Calling him Speed Bump Charlie needs to step up. And they were talking about Speed Bump Charlie and holding, at least on the score, I'll give them a tip of the hat. We're saying these tackles are atrocious. And something, how are you... You're here for two years. You still haven't found... Three years, you haven't found your identity. You're an off offensive guru who can't run plays. You're an offensive guru that can't block plays. I like big plays, Shane, in the open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
What are you going to do? I know we're getting up to our guest. He's coming up right now in a second. I'm going to... We only do it like this, though, Claudio. Right? Where are you, Claudio? Of course. I'm right here. I'm, I'm just... I'm waiting for our guy. He's there. He's waiting. He's, he's waiting in for the us. green room. I can see it. So, yeah, yeah, we he's always in the green room, so we're waiting for the open, Phil. So listen, every week when we have a guest, we always do it in style and grace. This guy deserves all of that. Here we go. You can find this guy every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, hosting Sean and Maya in the morning from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Central Time. His knowledge of sports is matched by few in the industry. Having played football in college and professionally in Italy and semi-pro hey, for 15 years, he was a league-leading rusher in the Italian League in 1994, beating out Paulie Walnuts. 100 crew, please stand up and give it up for the 2013 Mid-States Football League Hall of Fame inductee, Sean Sierra. There he is. <laughs> What's up, fellas? How you doing? What's going on, Sean? Shane? How you doing? Nah, 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 nah. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Man, how we do it. Man, I'm fired up. I'll be out with you guys, man. I'm fired up. Is my my video messing up now again? No, you're you're good right now. You were Should real, I leave? real choppy. Should I leave? No, you're good now, in? man. You're I don't good. No, I don't know what's going on with this fucking stream yard stuff. It drives me crazy, Sean, because I upgraded the internet and everything, so everything should be copacetic, just like the Hall of Famer. Look at that. I didn't know you were in the Hall of Fame until Shane wrote it out. So, yep. That's a, oh, what was that like playing over in Italy real quick? Uh, it was the best time of my life. I didn't think any, anything could be better than college, and um, I was wrong. How <laughs> <laughs> simple as that? You know, it was, let me tell you something. Living a pro lifestyle, pro athlete's lifestyle was crazy here, I could imagine. But overseas, it's, it's just insane because obviously I looked a little different, so I stood out. Because uh, I was in northern Italy, I was in Bologna. If I was in southern Italy, I would have blended in a little more. Uh, that's just for all you history buffs, you probably, you'll know why. But um, you know, <laughs> up north, I stood out a little more, and so it was. It was you know everywhere I went, like oh, americani, americani. So what was really wild was that they wouldn't let me pay for a, a, a dinner or a drink. Oh, wow. really? Dude, that was insane. Like, I felt bad for a while. You know what I mean? Like, okay, I, I, I take a girl out, we go to dinner, and, you know, be, I don't know how many thousand lira it would be. And, like, ah, no pagi, no pagi, do americani, no pagi. I'm like, no, I have to pay. I have to pay. Yeah. And, like, no, no pagi, no pagi. And I was like, so I'd end up giving, like, the waitress, like, three fourths of what the meal cost. And so, obviously, now they're, they love me because, like, oh my God, he's giving us so much money. And, and, uh, and drinks, same thing. I go to a bar. Or a local establishment, and they're like, "Oh, the American is going touchdown, touchdown." I was like, "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> and so, dude, that was wild. That was really, really, really wild. So it was awesome, and I, I, I love architecture. You can call me uh, Art Vandalay if you'd like, but um, you know, I, I, I just, I was in the, the center of export. Yes, yeah, import exporter. <laughs> and so, you know, I'm in Italy, and you talk about the the architecture over there is just, it's crazy. Crazy, yeah. crazy, crazy. Well, we're crazy about these Chicago Bears. And, Sean, you've been watching it. At, we started off the show. Obviously, the offense is holding this team back from what we believe, obviously, this championship quality defense we see. It's the same old, same old with this team. They hire an offensive guy. And they never can then get a consistent offensive performance. Not anything we've ever seen here. So talk about your feelings about Coach Nagy. Where are you standing with him? Not, not a Nagy fan at all, dude. I can't stand him. All right, he's oh. a guy from, from Jump Street. He came in and he refused. He's one of those, you know, he, he's, he's a used car salesman, okay? And that's, right, that's right. the issue. All right, he sits there and, and sells a lot of wolf tickets and says what you want to hear and talks a lot and, – and, um, it's very, very uh, amiable to the fans, to the to the media, but he doesn't do shit. Okay, so case in point, um, Jordan Howard was not his type of running back. 
I get it. Right. Not a problem. You have your own system. You have running backs that fit, not a power back. But just because Jordan Howard wasn't his type of running back doesn't mean Jordan Howard wasn't a good running back. And Jordan Howard was a very good running back. And the only person totally. up until last year who had more yards since he came in was Ezekiel Elliott. So you're talking about top company here that he's keeping, and he refused to use him. So what you do is if you're a good offensive coordinator, if you're a smart offensive coordinator, is what you do is you morph your system to fit the skill set of your players. You don't make your players fit, fit your system. That's that was a one that was one thing. Then then yeah. you got we, we, uh, one of my guys I love, Javon Wims. Yes, so I, I love this guy. Now this guy's not a great ball uh, route runner. Okay, that's, that's fine. Okay, that needs to be be worked on. Needs to be tightened up. But what does he do? This guy can jump out of the gym. If you watch some of his highlights at Georgia, this guy's 6'3", former basketball player, 6'3", with a, with a 37-inch vertical. You mean to tell me you can't uh, put him, line him up one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, have a, have a slot in the middle, have a slot run right at the safety to hold the safety, and have a jump ball with a guy with a 37-inch vertical? I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. And you know what? And sometimes football is just that simple. It's literally exactly. just that simple. I'm bigger. If you don't believe me, look at Jimmy Graham. Jimmy Graham, I'm 6'7", you're 5'9". I'm bigger than you. I'm going to post up, turn around, catch the ball, and you're going to be behind me and you can't do a damn thing about it. So he's not putting his best – he's not putting his players in the best position to be successful. And I know it sounds like a, like a cliche, but it's so true. And he's not doing it, and it pisses me off because we have the talent. Imagine this. Imagine Javon Williams on one side, Allen Robinson in the slot, Jimmy Graham on another side, and pick your poor, whoever you want on the other side, right? Ridley, uh, um, now Anthony Miller on one the other side, whatever you want. Or Cole Komet. Cole Komet. I don't there want Anthony go. Miller right now. Yeah, he, he's, he's, he's kind of annoying. He's, he's pissing me off, too. His lack of effort and is a little – but that's, that's another story. So you, get, so, you give me a you give me That's a, so a sad three. to see with Anthony Miller, Sean. Yeah, dude. you got to agree because he, you know, he was stringing together some games at the end of the season last year uh, where he were like, all right, this kid's going to start growing. Thought maybe he settled down in the offseason, became a father, seemed like he was busting his ass. Working out, you know, working hard. Came into this year, didn't have a great game, but caught a big ball from Mitch in Detroit. Game one. And yep. since then, it's, I mean, he, he did have another touchdown, but man, you talk about regression. You know, Phil does his tape, never lies every week. And you see this kid kicking and screaming when he doesn't get a ball and oh, yep. walking so off childish. the sideline. Sean, you've been around the world playing this game. How many coaches that you've played for are going to stand for something like that when they go back and watch the tape and see that a kid that's not producing on the field and is going to act that immature on the field the way that he was? And while you're letting a guy, you brought him up, Riley Ridley, they're not even dressing this kid. They're not I, even giving him a chance. I don't even have to go to coaches. I, I, would play, I played with – Every single quarterback that I played with would have kicked him off the field. They would have yelled at coach, get him, get his ass off the field. I don't want him out there. The quarterbacks that I played with wouldn't even have gotten to the head coach. And those are the quarterbacks I've had. I played with uh, Tom Chacho uh, at, at Holy Cross. He was the first team All American. Um, I had a I had the number three quarterback in Italy when I was out there. And uh, then when I played here, semi pro, I had two quarterbacks who who took us to national championships, um, two different teams. And so those guys would have, man, they would have yelled, get, get his ass off the field in a heartbeat. And I've seen it. <laughs> so I, and, and that's how I know that these are the guys. But um, as far as coaches, every single one of them would have got them off. Like, get off. Get off the field. You know what? Yeah, you, exactly. if you're upset because you didn't get the ball because you're open. Guess what? There's other people who are open on, on plays that you get the ball. And they don't sit there and bitch and moan like a little crybaby. So that, that's really disheartening. And I'll tell you what I think it is. I think he's starting to get a big head. And, and why, I don't know, but he, he's starting to have a little, a little too much attitude for me and when you really haven't done anything. You know, you're not – you haven't – you're not six, 800-yard receiver, you know, six, eight touchdown kind of guy. If you, if you did, if you were, I could see you. I could understand why you're getting a big head. I wouldn't agree with it, but I could understand it. But you're not giving me that type of production to start thinking you're God's gift to the, 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 the best thing since Jerry Rice. Sorry, kid. Let me ask you this. I mean, big play in the game, that third down play – He's catching the shallow cross. Obviously, he's got the safety sitting there. He catches the ball. Instead of being Victor Cruz, uh, Julian Edelman, a Wes Welker that knows where the sticks are, is unselfish and dive forward and get the first down, 
he tries to counter back, make a juke like he's going to make a big play and gets smashed, you end up getting, having to punt. This is the kind... These kind of mistakes without any accountability. Oh, he's starting next week. You were throwing to him up. Remember, a couple weeks before, coming across the middle on a dig, he drops the ball, it tips up, they get intercepted. Yep, and it doesn't go on his record it's, and the QB's record. Exactly. He's pointing the finger at Mitch every chance he gets, talking shit about Mitch to everybody and their brother, and he's not doing shit. And Coach Furry keeps putting him out. What about Riley Ridley? Where's he? Give him a shot. Best That's route runner, I thought, in that draft. That's what they was, was claiming. That's what they said to us. I know. Brian Pace called him the beacon of light. Right, Shane? <laughs> yeah, they, they did two dra- <laughs> They, they no, said serious. it about Anthony Miller and Riley Ridley. But, yeah, I mean, that's not even – that's an exact quote from Ryan Pace. He said yeah. when we got to the fourth round, I had mentioned it on a draft show the night before, and I'm like, guys, if we, get, if we come up with our pick in the fourth round and Riley Ridley's there – you got to take the kid. I mean, he's he's not his brother, obviously. But this kid, one thing, Sean, you brought it up. Keep it simple. You can you can do a lot of damage on offense that way. I mean, f- something that Phil and I talk about time and time again on this offense, the Bears have the personnel to to slant teams to death. And oh, we my, rarely to, to see his point. it. Yeah, Javon we, Wims. Exactly. I we said this. rarely ever see it, and it drives me nuts. I said it on BHL, Sean, right after the game. Think about your two tight end personnel. You're running straight seams, and then you got these two fucking six foot three receivers that could jump out of the gym running slants behind, behind them. them. Bingo. What are you, who's stopping that with Foles? Only Leno. That's it. <laughs> if I, I put up on the tape, never lie. Tell people that have never played the game on a three-step drop: should your quarterback ever get touched? No. Exactly. Nope. Never. Only, <laughs> only a here. Three-step drop from a, in a shotgun. A shotgun a three. Drop, a That's shotgun. like a five-step drop. Quick. Yeah. <laughs> it's like boom, boom, yeah. two. <laughs> like I yeah, can't yeah. even. I can't even understand the the. T- these are the two questions, Miller and Leno. It's like, hold Mitch accountable, not hold these players accountable, begins to question your code. Now, Jimmy Graham's out there walking around. I've There's a lot of loafing. Talk about, well, you already talked about that with Shane and your quarterbacks, but talk about the leadership or the professional level because you've played there, there's two sides to the team, and there's a defensive side, and then there's an offensive side. At what point does the defense then say, enough is enough with this bullshit? You know, what's funny is the the semi-pro team that I played for here, uh, the second one, the Chargers was the first one, and the Thunder was the second one. The Thunder had always had a phenomenal, phenomenal defense, and their offense was just kind of middle of the road, you know, they won a couple of mid-states tournaments and things like that. And so when the team folded that I was playing on the Chargers back in 04, I went to them in 05. And then another team in the area had folded and had come over to the to the Thunder as well. So we, we were talking about like an all-star team. And this defense had never seen anything like it. Now the defense, because the defense would – and I had seen this team play when I would scout them. And, man, I'd see them on the sideline yelling at their running back – yelling at their quarterback, yelling at their receivers, catch the goddamn ball, catch the ball, get your ass up in the hole, stop pussyfooting around, get your ass up in the hole. And I'm seeing this from the stands when I was on the other side. And so when we get when I came over to that team and they were like they and they realized that, that I was there, they're like, oh damn, this guy ain't pussyfooting around. He's coming through the hole. And it, it was funny because they never had to say that to us because we started putting up like 35 points a game. Like if they had 20 points a game that was an offensive explosion for them beforehand. When we came over, it was like 35 minimum. And so this defense never had to do that. But I had seen this defense, you know, when I was scouting them when I was on the other team, go after their own players and say, hey, listen, you guys got to score. We're tired of being out there. We're tired of, you know, of, we're scoring. You know, they're scoring. they would score as much as the, as the offense would. And, you know, they, they would get pissed. And, and, you know, so I've seen it. I haven't been on teams like that, but I've seen it from the other team that, you know, when, when scouting them. And it, it gets tiring because they just like, you know what, give us, give me a lead. 
So now if you're up 14, we're up 21, they're not running the damn ball. They're not running it. So guess what? I get to pin my ears back, and I get to go get the quarterback. If, right. they, if they gas me for a 20-yard uh, uh, draw, okay, good. I'll take it. But guess what? They're going to they're gonna throw soon. So, yeah, it was it's deep. I, I, the defense that I played for before I got there, they had done that to the offense, and uh, it's, it, it doesn't take long. It doesn't take long when you can't hold, carry your own weight. Trust me. Speaking of defense, and that let's we've talked about enough of the negatives right now. Let's but let's stay on the defensive side of the ball. Number twenty three, man. You you oh. follow Kyle Fuller's career, and I mean he he came out hot as hell as a rookie, then kind of tailed off at the end of the year. That that second year, I mean, there was a point where they were thinking about moving off of him completely. Came back with a great year. I mean, he's. I know Phil took some slack, but I'm right there with him, man. He's. I think you have to put him in the conversation of being a top three cornerback in this league, just the way that he's playing. I mean, the physicality at cornerback that he plays with, I haven't seen in a long, long time. Sean, you you watch the games just like we do. What did you think of that? Mike Pereira coming out and saying, "Oh, you see right there, it's 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 not shoulder to shoulder. It was shoulder to head, and I mean, it was it was clearly shoulder to shoulder." And these guys are talking that, but talk on Kyle Fuller a little bit and what you're seeing with him because he's he's a special player. Yeah, I met Kyle Fuller when I was in broadcast school, um, and I was uh, I was ta- I was a teacher. I don't know if you knew that, Shane. So I was a teacher, and I transitioned and get into this business. And so I was uh, head of security over at the Under Armour store. So he'd come in a few times and you know, I introduced myself like, hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Real nice guy. Real quiet. Real nice. He's probably buying and golf I, clubs, right? Might have been. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was just like, hey, you know, good luck with you. You know, keep, you know, keep it up. Big Bear fan, whatever. To see where he came from that point. Yeah. Because he started off great. And then remember, that was the last year of uh, um, the head coach, um, Trust me. Leonard, oh, Leonard, 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 uh, I'm thinking of the three, uh, Big Bang Theory, the guy, Leonard, oh, that's who he Mark looks like. Trestman. Trestman, Mark Trestman. Mark Trestman, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, I call him. Leonard. <laughs> I thought you were talking about Leonard Floyd for a second. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> Leonard me from sweats the, again. Big Bang Theory. And so, um, the, the, you know, the veterans are really, really, they tuned him out. And I think that really kind of got into to him as well because his, his play deteriorated. And I think they had a lot to do with the locker room. Okay, and then yeah. then uh, Fangio comes. Fangio puts him on blast. Remember, he, he put his ass yeah. on blast, saying, "I don't think he's he's prepares well enough or something in order." Basically, call him out, put through his ass. Wait, hold him accountable. Him accountable? <laughs> what There's happened, a crazy. Right? Hold him accountable. What? To the media, not to his to the media. To the whole exactly, city. the whole and, city. And hmm. he was embarrassed. He was embarrassed, and guess what? He ch- he changed his tune. He he started he started watching more film. You can tell by his ability to to run the routes with the receivers. He got a little more physical. He was never afraid to to stick his nose in there. Oh, no. But you can yeah. say he's all. But he got more physical. And to see where he's at now, man, I freaking love it. This dude, I I, I can't agree with you more that he's he's definitely a top three uh, cornerback. And the it's physicality not- that he has that really sucks is that they call it this is the pussification of America. Yeah. And it's in which my favorite sport with football. It really sucks because this guy, <laughs> yes. it, dude. I, here's what I here's my here's my thought, dude. man. Here's what I said. You know what? You sign a waiver saying I understand there could be brain damage. I understand there could be you know complications after my playing career is over. But I still I don't hold the NFL liable for these things, and I'm going to you know waive my rights to sue. Right. Okay. I want I want people's heads knocked off, dude. I want people's heads knocked off. I want I would always I was a defensive coordinator when I was teaching. Okay. And I would always tell my guys, put your face mask through the God blessed chest. <laughs> to put their face, put your face mask through their goddamn chest. I said, I want you to hit their freaking spine. Okay. Yeah. I said, run through these guys. And that's what I want. I want the, I want people scared to come across the middle. You understand? I want guys to, to have head yeah. on a swivel. I want guys. Cause you see now when guys have alligator arms, they hear, they hear footsteps. Oh, They're not yeah. really hearing footsteps. They're not yeah. going to be knocked in the next week. They're not going to need smelling salts to wake them back up on a sideline. <laughs> that's no, I, that's what I need. That's what football is about. Football is not a collision. It's not a. It's not a uh, contact, contact sport. It's a right. collision sport. All Lord. right. It's it's three and a half hours. Three to three and a half hours of car crashes every freaking yeah. 35, 40 seconds. And this is what I love about the game. And they've taken it away from people like Kyle Fuller, who's not going to pe- not get people in the next week <laughs> as best as he could. And then they want to call bullshit because the guy gets his bell rung. Hey, too bad. You know what? He, the guy changes levels. 
when you and if you notice, he would have hit him smack dab in the chest, yeah. but the guy saw it, he braced for it, which brought exactly. his head down. Exactly. So that was a bullshit call. And Mike Pereira. That man, was crazy. I, Actually, I, Lauren, I gotta I gotta shout out Lawrence Holmes here because he sent out a tweet when that happened. He goes, Kyle Kyle Fuller done did it. He became too physical for the NFL. And I said, think think about that. I mean, it's funny. He wasn't being serious, but it's also fucking true. He's no, I too think he fit- might have been serious. <laughs> yeah. So, but it, yeah, man, the, the kid has taken the step, and it's it's great to see. Yeah, I love Kyle Fuller. How could you not? I mean, I think of Donnell Wolford. Bingo. You know, you know the guy played with physical. Physicality, he yeah. grew. He became He's small a as lockdown. Hell, dude. Oh He's my god! Small as hell, dude. I've met I've met him a couple of times. I used to work uh, Revy Story's football camps. Yeah. Uh, when I was, when I was playing, so I'd met so every time the I'd meet I met all the guys. So I started back in like turn of the century. <laughs> that sounds funny <laughs> to say, but yeah. So we're talking like Erlacher Brown, A Train, um, the A Train, David, David uh, who was the guy from David, David Terrell. Is, Terrell, I was gonna say Thomas. <laughs> David, David Terrell. Terrell. I Jerry was so Zuma, excited for getting him in the draft that year. David yeah, Terrell, two thousand one. Yeah. So I met Danelle Wolford, and man, he's a short oh. dude. Man, he is short. Yeah. He's not yeah, as I, short he, as I am, but. Really? No, dude, he's short. Because I'm 5'11". It feels 5'3". I'm 5'7". And I just got... <laughs> I just got... Although at Hofstra, the media guide said 5'10". I used to uh-huh. love that. Every media guide's got to <laughs> boost it up a little bit. Well, that's what I'm saying. He he would know at Holy Cross. We so played hear, Holy Cross once. So I want to hear a funny story. So I'm technically 5'10 and 7 eighths. So my mm-hmm. freshman year, so the, the scouts would come in every year. And we'd have a little pro day at Holy the Cross. Pro day, yeah. So I get um, my first year after my freshman year. I'm excited. I'm like pro day. There's gonna be a whole bunch of scouts. It's just a couple, all right. And so they they measure. You got to put your feet like stand like a duck and just stand tall. And I had I had a little bit. I had a lot more hair back then. Okay. So they measure me and like mm-hmm. five ten and seven eighths. I'm like, oh shit, man. I just want man. It's five eleven sounds good. Five eleven, two hundred pounds, running back. Right. That's that Walter Payton. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so then next year comes after my sophomore year. I'm like, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just stretch a little bit, just up like this. Okay. <laughs> so the guy, you gotta have your, your feet standing like this. They have it, and the guy, you know, they raise you, and the guy just tapped my head. I was like, oh. He's like. Five ten seven eight. I'm like, yeah. son of a bitch, man. <laughs> my, my junior year, I'm like, this motherfucker. I'm, I'm saying I'm gonna get five eleven. I'm one eighth of an inch. Come on, dude. It's not gonna be difficult. So my junior year, I try to get up on my toes a little bit, just just a tad, just to get that one quarter. And then the guy hit my head again, and bound. He's like five ten and seven eighths. I'm like, you son of a bitch. Three years in a row. <laughs> my senior year, you know, I was trying to get to the NFL and. and and you know, I was like, okay, five eleven looks much better. And he he measures me. He's like five. I was like five ten and seven eight. He's like, yeah. How did you know? I'm like, trust me. I know. I know. I know. Four we, just years had in a row. This, we just had this talk last night. I'm six two and seven eight. So I everyone's like, how tall are you? I'm like, oh, I'm six three. You gotta you gotta round up, man. Yeah, you know, give it, give especially at one you know one eighth of an inch. Come yeah, on, man. Exactly. And I'm telling you, I tried every trick in the book. You know, my four years there to get that one eighth of an inch. And it didn't. It didn't happen. So that was, that was nuts. Oh, that's crazy, man. Crazy. It's a, it's a struggle for us short guys. <laughs> and they want to make me shorter. I'm not five three, jackass. <laughs> anyway, this just a ball busting. That's all. This coach, he uh, he has these situations that come up because you were hired under the Andy Reid tree, and you see Frank Reich. You see Peters, Doug Peterson, and then we see our guy, Coach Nagy, and you don't see any sort of consistency on offense. Nope. So how concerning is that for you, and are you at the point of saying this guy's just got to focus on being the head coach and give the play calling to somebody else? Is that where you are? No, oh, I'm past that, dude. I am past that. When again, oh, really? it, it started with the Jordan Howard thing, and then every year just got worse and worse. You know, the the one thing that I really hate about um, coaches, offensive coaches, and believe me, and I, although I was a defensive coordinator, I played running back my entire career. Okay, and the one thing that there's certain things you just don't get cute with. Okay, if it's third and one, 
I don't need a double reverse flea flicker to attack all the people. Okay. All right. So you, did, you didn't like the you didn't like the reverse call in the NFC Championship game to Devin Hester on third and one or third and two? It was. <laughs> no. You know, <laughs> my Mike thing Martz. is this. Yeah. You know, my, my thing is this: like you, you don't have a fullback, okay, and you need a fullback. Okay, and I granted he's not going to get you. There's not there's not very many roster spots, but let's be keep it real. You need a fullback. I agree. Okay, there, there's there's going to be situations Absolutely. where it's third and one, and we're in our four minute offense, and we got some joker on the other side who who we know is going to come back and score if you give him the ball. I need I need my big my hogs and my fullback to lead away to get one yard. Okay, not beat someone to the edge. Not someone, you know, trying to confuse people. I'm saying we're going right here. We're going to shove it down your goddamn throat, and you're not going to stop it. And we, but we don't have an identity, so we're not a running running team, a passing team. We can't really be a passing team because we got the revol- we have the, the revolving door over, and you, you call him the walrus over the left tackle. <laughs> okay, so we we can't be a true passing team because we're, we, the quarterback's scared. Uh, he's going to get blasted from behind. So we don't really have an identity. See so this, Sean. We, Oh, that's classic. That's classic, dude. That is classic. I oh, knew that was coming. I knew what, that. What was that? Was... Can I get zoo or something? No, he put that a Photoshop together. Oh, yeah. I thought it... I'm coaching up the walrus. I'm yelling at the You're walrus. You're yelling at him. I'm yelling oh, at him. I didn't even look at the background. I was like, how did you get a walrus in your house, dude? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's taking petting dude to a whole nother level. Dude. Yeah. Unfortunately, he's, he's haunting my dreams. Yeah. It's almost Halloween. That walrus is four <laughs> foot seven, so it shows you how short Phil is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, Sean, you know, you talk, you, you talk about that, and you talk on these third and shorts. One of the, the thing that fired me up the most in – I'm never going to fault a, a, a head coach for going down the way that he wants to go down. If you're going to if you're going to default to being aggressive, default to being aggressive. But you have to go down with your best guys on the field. We saw versus Carolina on a third and two critical crunch time play. <laughs> Nagy pulls fucking Montgomery off the field for that. And to me, that's. 100% coaching malpractice. You put Patterson in the backfield. They ended up throwing the football there, which I wouldn't have done it myself, but if you're going to go down being aggressive, you're going to go down. But you have to agree. If you're going to do that, you have to have your best players on the field for that situation, correct? You have to. You know, Jimmy Graham, I saw him out a couple times on third <laughs> yeah. and short uh, this past week. Like, listen, dude, here's some of the things that really bug me. It's football is simple if you keep it that way, right? You know what happens is you get guys, and especially offensive offensive gurus and geniuses, and they want to be the smartest guy in the room, and it really pisses me off. And sometimes it's just that you just need to keep it simple, okay? And what happened to a uh, you know an off tackle run or inside zone, okay, or fake inside zone and a tight end pop, you know, or tight end out, some something to get your one and a half two yards that as soon as Jimmy Graham catches it gets tackled, it doesn't matter first down. Okay, that's the problem with this guy. He's always he outthinks himself too much, and that's frustrating because he's trying to be the smartest guy in the goddamn room, and that's the thing that's going to be his demise. I totally agree. It's frustrating to watch it on tape when you really get to the root of the problems. They're so glaring on offense when that's your calling card. So you saw him at the end of the presser after the game, and he's making jokes. And you could see that he has some sort of rite of passage with the media. That they're even, a, I'm sorry to ask yeah. you this about the offense. What? You're sorry for what? He has a responsibility to to get this offense corrected. He's never done it. Phil, J.J. Stankovic essentially admitted that to us when we had him on here. That they're... The he, meat, they're he, go ahead. J.J. told Phil and I flat out, he goes... Most of the time, I have the question that I want to ask. I don't ask it, and then when I get home, I regret it. And it's, the, I'm like, what are you? That's your shot. I mean, I these Zoom co- press conferences. They, uh, I forget who the the one guy was, but they came back to him a second time, and he's like, No, I already asked my one question. I'm good. I'm like, What are you? Do- what, one what question. Are you, yeah, one. What are you doing? You can't yeah. come up with with another one to ask and. 
They better I'm not like, give me credentials. They yeah, exactly. Not, That's give us. And I'm telling you, I'm oh, trying man. to get. I'm trying them, to get yeah. some. I'm trying to get credentials as well. And uh, yeah, we'll burn that them, Zoom meeting down. <laughs> I'll exactly. tell you that. Man, I'm telling you, you, you I'm telling you, it's gonna it's gonna be one. And I might not have those credentials for long, but damn it, I'm gonna ask the questions. <laughs> okay, coach, what were you thinking? You had a third one. Why didn't you try and smash it up the middle? Why not a tight end pop? What were you thinking? Why are you why the double reverse tech, tackle eligible pass? You know, yeah. just it put put his ass on blast. How okay, because no no one does that, and people are scared because it's this is a bears town, and to have credentials for the bears is something. Okay, and they don't want to lose their credentials. But you know what? You have a you have a right because this is what all the fans are asking. Why the hell are you running this stupid play on a third and one? Why are you you know why are you going deep on third and one when you need you know two one or two yards? Give me a five yard out. Okay, get move the chain. That's the whole thing. Keep the chains moving. I don't you know go long on first down. Go long on second down. But don't take a shot on third down. Okay, right. when you're not first of all you don't have this you're not in sync. You're not in sync with these guys. This this offense is not in sync, and you still want to run, have deep deep out routes and go routes and corners and digs. No, you can't do that. Give me, give me, keep the chains moving. Keep that defense on the field. Keep them tired. Wear them, win by attrition, and just keep doing it. Every t- that's all we wanted to do. Every level of football I played was I just want a first down. Just give me a first down. Just give me exactly. a first down. If you get enough Move first downs, chains. you Move give me enough chains. first downs. You're in the end zone. So we don't need a 50 <laughs> yard run. We don't need a 70 yard run. Give me 10. Give me six. Give me eight. Give me six. Give me four. Give me three. Give me seven. Give me 10. Boom. Keep it on. And this guy, he wants a, a big play. Why? I don't know. Football is simple if you keep it that way. Listen, what do you say? I saw one of the fans. Well, he can't be that bad because the team is playing for him hard. <laughs> He can't be that bad because they're five and one. So what's your response? I know what my response is, but. Go ahead. Yeah, he's horrible. Put I'll the tell you comment why he's down. Horrible. There you go. He's horrible, okay? And, and that's the bottom line. The team's not playing that bad. No, first of all, let's remember, they're professionals. They're, they're playing for money. They're not playing for him, right? They're playing for the, the 600000 the hundred, the, the 800000 the two point five, the $6.8 million, whatever they're making, that's what they're playing for them and their teammates. They're not necessarily playing for him. Let's get that straight, okay? The bottom line is this. He's horrible because of his decisions, his, his decision making is god awful at times. Again, this his goes back to the got to be the smartest guy in the room situation. Okay, and that, that bothers me. That bothers me. Why are you passing mm-hmm. on third and short when you're in a four minute offense trying to run a clock out? Why are right. you passing the god blessed ball? It doesn't with, make sense. With your best offensive weapon on the sideline. Why and why aren't you fi- and why aren't you finding people? Who, who for running backs or anybody who catches the ball and steps out of bounds when you're in a four minute offense? Why aren't they being fined? Why aren't they being pulled? These are small things. These are big, uh, than what you call it, being held accountable. Okay, because you you know what you need the clock to keep running, so you slide your ass. Once you get the first down, you just slide. You give yourself up. Keep the clock going. All these things that he does or that he doesn't do, these are things that are going to kick. They're going to come back and bite you in the ass when you face a good team or when you get to the playoffs. They're going to bite you then. And it's not, and you know what? If you don't nip that in the bud now, it's good. we're going to be having the same conversation in, in, in the first round loss. Like, how did we lose? Well, because he ran out of bounds, or he got pushed out of bounds. The clock stopped. They, they and they got they had enough time to go downfield and, and kick a field goal, and we lost. I totally agree. I mean, you, we didn't plan. Shane brought up the reality of Kyle Fuller, but that's the perfect example of someone being held accountable as a professional and looking himself in the mirror and changing course. Listen, nobody's story's written. I've said this. I'll say it again to the fan base. Charles Leno is an NFL football player. He's one of the best play, you know, elite athletes, but he doesn't work at his craft. He doesn't care on the field. He's lazy. He lacks fundamentals and discipline, and it keeps being put out there. And who's responsible for that? The head fucking football coach. That's your job. That's your job to have them prepared. You can't come out in quads, go bunches, think all of a sudden now you're in the I formation. Now in the next play, you're out of the I. You're in trips, empty set on third and one. There's no nothing that coincides with what you're trying to do offensively. It's like, what are we going to do? Let's th- let's throw this. Out. It's it's like you're playing a 13-year-old in Madden. It really is. <laughs> it really is. They don't want to run the fucking ball. They're throwing every down. 
every down. And it's unfortunate because I really believe, listen, from watching the tape, I'm telling you, I really believe they did a disservice to Mitch Trubisky. Oh, hell yeah. They did a di they're doing a disservice to Nick Foles because he's take I don't he's not gonna last. There's no fucking no. way this guy's gonna stay because he's taking shots after Leno just I call him he's got a new nickname every week. Now he's Usher, the R and B <laughs> He's just ushering people back. He's like seven o'clock on the dot no. hold up. Speaking of that, do you got it, Shane? Throw it up. Do we have that? Not that. What do you want? I, I thought I had the ush. Here we go. This is hindering the running game. It's hindering the passing game and critical downs. You saw it today. Shane, that third down where he almost throws an interception and Mooney helps out. That's because Leno just ushered him in. Seven o'clock on the dot. Leno's in the drop top just allowing him to fucking go, Usher. Usher, where's, where's your seats? Get the flashlight. This is what we're dealing with here. <laughs> this is what we do on this network. We keep it a hundred. I got my boy the super back, Sean Sierra, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Sports Zone Chicago. He's always talking sports. I had the pleasure of coming on the show with you and my boy now. My boy. Yeah, you and Ivan. I said, Oh, Ivan too, but Oh Kenneth, Kenneth Kenneth, Davis, Kenneth yeah. Davis, former running back with the Bills. I keep talking. <laughs> remember, remember Kenneth Davis. <laughs> Number twenty. No, Ivan's great too. Ivan came on the show on our hype and he was the first guy I felt like that brought the fucking draft Dr. Phil hype. The notorious DDP. I'm getting nicknames. I like that one. Notorious <laughs> DDP. I'm gonna get a t shirt, Chris Sandlin. I'm five Do six, it. five Do six and a half, it. five seven on this day. What do you got? He's call me five three. Fuck. <laughs> now you got people believing that shit. I don't think I would have got a scholarship to play at Hofstra at five three. Probably not unless you're a kicker. <laughs> unless yeah. I was a kid. Unless I was a kid. <laughs> I was a punt returner and a receiver, but yeah. You're one anyway. of those fifty guys, huh? Those, those yes. 50, those That's why when I watch. Anthony Miller, it gets me so. Listen, I'm the kid has talent. He's got what yeah. you want at that yeah. position. Yeah, he just doesn't back. give a fuck about anybody but Anthony Miller. And those guys are good if they're Chad Johnson and they fucking work their craft. Because Chad only cared about Chad, and Keyshawn only cared about Keyshawn, and we could go give down the, the list. Ball. Yeah, give me the damn ball. That's fine, but know your fucking craft. Yeah. And be you're, a fucking professional. You're putting up 12, 1,300 yards and 9 or 10 touchdowns every single year. <laughs> exactly. You're going to let some of that shit slide. But You know, Jimmy Johnson said it perfectly. He said, I treat everybody fairly on this team. I don't treat everybody equally. Yeah. And if you're, if, if you're, if you're a, you know, with Emma Smith one time, he, he, uh, he was in, a, in a, an interview and he said, no, if Emmett Smith came in, you know, if the 52nd, 53rd guy came in late, I'd cut his ass. He goes, if Emmett Smith came in late for curfew or he was out something, I said, Emmett, don't do that again. You understand? <laughs> yeah, <All right>. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing about this team. You make a great, uh, uh, you brought something up in my head. The best player on the team, number 50, Deuce, he is the first guy there, the hardest worker, the most effort ever, nobody could question. I know Chicago can't have fucking nice things because you had all of these fucking haters and I fucking, I gave people the cheat code. I said, here, here's the breakdown of what Max really doing. Give it to your fucking shitty friend. Give it to the guy that doesn't give a fuck and is just going to run with the narrative. Give it to the media guy that's saying, where, where are the sacks? Where are the sacks? And then watch what he's doing in the run game and f team play, destroying blocking schemes, helping out Akeem get solo blocked, for God's sake, because he's so good. This kind of shit just drives me nuts. If your leader plays that hard, you would think that it would, you know, shit goes downhill. You would think guys would fucking pick up their game. And you, this Chicago Bears defense... To me, that was a great showcase of what they've been doing against Tampa. It's like these fucking Packer fans. 
Fuck it. The Bears beat Tampa, right? <laughs> the Tampa beats the fuck out of the Packers. You can't stride your shit. Wait till winter. Wait till we're coming. You can't. No, That's you, just a, your that, ass you just got your fucking ass served. You got served. And it's fair game with this social media world. It drives me nuts. There's great things about it, and then there's shitty things about it because yeah. a lot of people don't know about the tape never lies. They stumble upon it. I saw the Italian dude from Canada just now. I didn't even know about you guys. Where have you been? Now he's finding out. This is what we do here. And that's why it's up to you guys to let everybody know about the Tape Never Lies Network. This is our live show. Keeping it 100. Are we keeping it 100 tonight with Sean Sierra? I mean, Sean is bringing it 100%. Chicago Sports Zone, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You do the same stuff, but you talk all Chicago sports, right? All of them, baby. All of them. Sports Zone Chicago. You can download the app, check it out. Google Play, iTunes, Amazon, wherever you get your apps from, download it. And you can check it out. We have a whole bunch of podcasts on there. We have a whole bunch of live shows. We have uh, our live shows are really good too. And so we have one that's really cool. It's called the uh, the Humidor Podcast. We got a whole we, whole bunch of guys, like four guys or five guys, uh, smoke uh, smoking stogies, smoking stogies, talking sports. I'm oh, like, what is better? Oh, we, <laughs> no, we got a we got a guy like that on our. I thought you were yeah, talking we, about Claudio for a second. Here. Hold on. Yeah, we got so, a guy like that on our staff. We're starting right a show here. like this. Smoke weed every day. <laughs> oh, I love it! I love it. Claudio, you might, Claudio might be welcome on that. Uh, anyway, I got to put him in here. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. There What's he up? Is. What's up, Sean? The barber. Please. Yeah, that's me. Listen, I don't know why you. Oh, I, was you I was giving you your. Oh. I was giving well, you. No, I was going to give Sean some props, man. Oh, you, go ahead, dude. You you got the hype, man. You got the knowledge. Everybody in the in this chat room is loving you, man. You know, you 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 brought it. And you know, I just Thanks, want to say man. a great job. Definitely. This hey, is I put, you know what? I've our... been involved in forty-five seasons of football, so yeah, I know a little bit, and I love, I love football. There's nothing like it. It's the most, uh, inter- it's the best sports because it's the most interdependent. I love it. Yeah. You got, you need everybody, and you know what? That's the only place where you, 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 you got to rely on. You know that fat kid that you didn't like with exactly. the lazy eye. Why? Because he's gonna block for you to get a, a quarterback. Yeah, it's like going to war, right? It's Dude, like exactly. War. And I yeah. love it, and it, it, it's awesome. And and I've been blessed to play this game for a long time and coach this game a long time awesome. and meet a hell of a lot of good people, bro. Yeah. Wow. So hey, listen. Yes. I don't know if you know. I'm 100 percent Italian. I, I hear obviously you were in Italy a long time. Can I get oh, a cut? Yeah, get closer. Yeah. You know, well, yeah, give me cut it out with a good Italian accent. Let's get it. Hold on, we'll get you close <laughs> up. We'll get them. <laughs> Let him single them. I don't know if you've seen the segment. Go ahead. <laughs> Cut it out. What are you doing, eh? <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Atso. Claudio. Atso. Claudio loves the Atso. Yes. What does yes. Atso mean? What does it It just means what the hell. You know, what the, what the hell? What, what the hell are you doing? Atso. Hey. What are you doing? <laughs> Listen, Sean, where can people find you on Twitter? You got social media. Where can they find you? Yeah, you know what? I made it nice and easy for everybody. I got the same... Same handle for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, the Snapper. <laughs> all one handle at the Sean Sierra. T H E S H A W N S I E R R A. You can check it out. You can find me anywhere. DM me, and uh, I, li- I love to talk sports, dude. You know, I'm, we're part of the generation, Phil, where I played baseball, football, basketball. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Summertime, to. dude. Summertime. Let me tell you, my mom. Ma- my mom's gangster, bro. She's fucking gangster. Okay. When I was in <laughs> grammar school. Okay. <laughs> During summer, we used to play outside of the St. Rita Grammar School and on the west side of the street because it's a three-story building. So in the morning, the, the shade into the street. So we right, were, you right. know, okay. So, but before I could go out, my mom, she was, uh, she worked in Chicago Public Schools. I'd have 10, count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 10 fucking worksheets that I have to do every morning before I could go out. So we started playing football at 10. So it means I had to get up at like eight. 7 30 8 o'clock every sun every day in the summer so i can make sure i could be out there with the guys playing football oh, we go wow. play football we play football then we go to 7-eleven then we come back we play lob softball then we go to 7-eleven then we come back and we play basketball <laughs> then we go to 7-eleven then we come back and we play fast pitch then, then we go back we play you know all kind we that play kill the guy you know kill the I mean? man with the ball kill, kill the, the guy man with the ball you <laughs> call they kill the guy kill the guy always, yeah. oh man i always <laughs> ask. the most important part of the game did you ever take your best player off the field 
<laughs> like our guy does. <laughs> yeah, coach is like, hey, Sean, we're we'll running. You go sit down. <laughs> it's the third and it's the third and one to win the national championship. Uh, you're the league MVP. Here, come on out, come on out, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sit down next to me. Let me put the backup in. He hasn't he hasn't got much time this year. I want him to, I want him to get a play in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> when I first met Sean, I saw him walking with and talking with his mom i'm like who is this guy because on the old network i saw that someone went on the show with him so then i started watching and then i was like oh i like this dude because he's walking with his mom and then we communicated with one and we hit it right off it's like we're family like we think alike we obviously share the same life upbringing almost because that was my life Claudio mm -hmm. lived in my neighborhood. He could tell you it was football. Oh, was you got off the bus. Cool. It's fucking tackle football up on this person's yard or this backyard, this park. It was football 24. Then uh, pit, uh, baseball in the street. And when it yeah, snowed out, soccer. it was football. Phil, Phil was scared to play soccer. Phil, he <laughs> never, couldn't, he I'm like, that's I hate soccer. We had to play kill soccer, was, remember? <laughs> kill <laughs> soccer. We would tackle. Anyway. <laughs> You but know what we is. used to do in, in when I was in grammar school it was right before so I was in sixth grade and eighth grade we won the league championship. But what I would do is I mean we'd talk about playing sports all my life. So me and my one of one of my best friends, Joey Icorn, we'd mm -hmm. always go, we'd just be in the basement. So we 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 practice. So when I realized that when basketball team started keying on my right hand, I would have him, he's a couple years younger, and I'd say, Okay, I just dribble my left and like all right, you gotta steal the ball. So I'd work on that. And then I'm like, you know what? It was football season. I'm like, you know what? Let's try the um, up and up and over. Let's try the Walter Payton. So we would stack the freaking uh, his his um, yeah the the, the cushions cool. from his yeah. from his couch oh, yeah. onto and don't ask me why. So I'm dumping over these things onto a couch with no cushions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just landing on those springs, like the springs, boom. exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, it's good times, man. Great times growing up, dude. Great times, sports, Spe sports, sports. Well, speaking of good times, it was so great to have you oh, on man. the show with us, killing it. The fans are loving it. Follow Sean if you're a hundred crew member. Let him know. We we're definitely gonna have you back on. I, I'm gonna jump on the show with you as well, again over on your network and keep it a hundred on the tape and good relationships. There's there's plenty of room for Bears talk when it's true Bears talk and when true analysis and knowledgeable. There isn't a place for frauds. I I just I just don't like how people misrepresent players that are giving their heart out and protect players that could give a shit. And I'll just throw two names. David Montgomery taking heat while Charles Leno is not even talked about in media sessions or anything, really. It's like, it's taboo. And we're the only ones, and I've been saying it for three years now, so you keep it exactly. Cherie, one of our top members here, also a Patreon subscriber to our patreon network she is calling you and appreciating your knowledge i appreciate your knowledge i appreciate your sense of humor big ups to you sean all around right shane great oh, stuff 100 man yeah no you brought that energy that we love here sean i mean the the, the hundred crew in the chat they're they're all talking about it so i think you you gained a a lot of fans tonight and that's that's what this is all about like phil said what we do here there's such a huge forum and there's a lack of good chicago bears football talk that's truthful and honest and i think that's what you bring i think that's what we bring and uh i think that that's what everybody wants so man it's thanks so much marriage. for coming on with us Hey, yeah. no problem. And I'm sober. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wait, wait till I get a few beers with me. Then I start lining people up like, look, get over here. Dude, you stand right here. You stand right here. And he tried, he tried to cut inside. I'm telling you, I've done that to people in bars. I've done that to people. That, and people who know me, like, oh, he's been drinking. Okay, let's move over here because I don't want to be part of it. One of his, uh, one of his demonstrations. <laughs> I'll have you know, man. When, I don't want to you, 
me. When you come back, and we're, we're going to do your intro up real good, and you're going to be 5'11", I promise you. Oh, that's <laughs> oh, the 5'11". <laughs> hey, could you say my college weight, too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's Sean Sierra, Sports Zone Chicago, the finest. What a great dude. Just even watching you do, uh, what is it called? I totally CrossFit, CrossFit and then talk it with your mom, that stuff, just keeping it real. Good I love stuff. when people are vulnerable but also passionate. That's what you are. We're going to have to bring you on. Like People want you on maybe on the post-game show. We might. Sometime. That, that, we'll have that to could bring work you out. There if we're not go. doing remotes, because we might be doing remotes over here in Chicago. So yeah, whatever. So if we're not, then yeah, I'll be more than happy. Nice. Yeah. All right, brother. Thank you hey, so much. Thank you for, for having me us. on, man. I had a blast. You guys are freaking awesome, dude. Freaking Thanks, awesome. Sean. And anytime you want to see, you know, you talk football, my energy goes up. I could be dead tired going on, you know, no hours of sleep for three days. You talk football, I'm there. I'm up. I'm hype. Nice. Well, love it. Def definitely follow the hype. The hype train is real with this guy. Love you, brother. Thank you. I appreciate you. it, we'll man. Talk. Love you guys. You Ciao. guys are bomb. Ciao. 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 Bello. Ciao. Hey. Ciao. Bello. Hey, I'm making a pizza. <laughs> what a great oh, guest. Awesome. It's fun, man. Great awesome. dude. You could listen to him. He even had rants. He had some rants going. Yeah. You could listen oh, to those rants. I, I awesome. said, awesome. I got on the phone great with him. He's like, Phil, I need to call you. Just get to know you a little bit before you come on my show. And I'm sure. We're talking. You could tell right away. Right away. This guy is like family. He's like, he's. Well, no, he lived nobody like wants me. to tune into a show and listen to somebody that's not passionate. That's why I said that when Sean was on with us, you can feel it. You know that he, he lives it and he breathes it and he loves it. And that's the same way that we are here. So that's why it works, man. You, you listen to. Somebody like Dan Weeder, you know, he used to drive me crazy. He's like, oh, the Bears are on the road this week. I got to go to Minnesota. And I'm like, you're going to Minnesota to cover a fucking football game, you exactly. asshole. Exactly. And you're going to whine about it. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, like Ed, for me, I'm more of a casual fan. I don't know the game like you guys know it. But no shit. Listening to you guys talk. Yeah. <laughs> listen, listening to you guys talk with Sean, it's like you guys have like this your own language because you guys just you know what I mean. You're talking about football like you know it's it's just it's awesome man. We're all learning. People in the chat room are learning. It's great. It's awesome stuff. Uh, we we got to bring Sean back on again. Make him yeah, a regular. There he He's is. Great I see dude. him in the green room. Thumbs He's up. He's still in the green room. Yeah. I didn't know if he wanted to stay on. I mean, did you want to stay on? You yeah, to hey, he's on. back. I'm yeah, back. Five foot eleven. Sean Sierra is back. He wanted to bring stay on, in the bring show. Bring on cars so he could tell him how wrong <laughs> about Nagy. Oh, oh. is just cars like coming? Spot, I've returned. I just sent cars the link. We, we oh, can okay. get. That. Maybe he is coming. So you, if you want to stick around, we got segments you could join us with. It'd be great. Dude, I'm done with. I'm done for the night, Papa. I'm good. I, my guys are oh at the bar. I'm gonna go meet him oh, for one, and then I got. I gotta go back home. Got to be in bed by eleven. I got CrossFit tomorrow, so unless you're staying uh, out till eleven, I can stay. I can stay with you, but. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we do. <laughs> hey, well, <laughs> Maron is right. This guy, look at all Maron. Oh, Maron. Oh, ah. oh, you mean eleven tomorrow? I thought you meant tonight. No. Yeah, eleven tonight. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, it's the, you're an hour ahead, so it's only gonna be nine here. It's, it's, oh yeah, we we stay on. We keep going. We got all these segments. Is cars coming? Should yeah, he know? is. I, he, he's got the link. He's he's uh he's playing dreading. dad right now. He's got a oh, okay. his words where he's got an angry elf that he's okay. trying to stuff back into into bed. So well, maybe he will be with us here shortly. We can always switch this up around and get to a segment, Shane. Do you want to do one of our segments? Uh, yeah, with Sean. Absolutely. Let's go. It's every do week it. do we it. do a segment. It's called Dyslexic Bear Down. And we go bear up and we is our positive bear. Our bear down is our negative player in the game. So we always do it. We go around like a fantasy league draft, Sean. You're going to give and you're going to be our guest. So I'm going to put you up right here where Claudio is. You're going to start us off. And then we go like a fantasy draft and a snake, and it'll go up to Shane, and then he'll come back with his bear up because we always end on the positive note. And we always start this segment with a bear up and a bear down like this.
Phil Atosian, Shane Marshall, the Tape Never Lies Network. A bear up, a bear down. It's Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest men around. A bear up, a bear down. It's Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest men around. A bear up, a bear down. It's Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest men around. A bear up, a bear down. It's Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest men around. A bear up. This week, Draft Dr. Phil and Shane Marsaw, the smartest men. Bear ups and bear downs of the week. Oh yeah, bear up, bear down, draft Dr. Phil and Shane is the smartest man around. He is the smartest man, the Tape Never Lies Network. Sean, bear up this week. You're looking at a victory. We had a victory Monday. The Bears beating the Carolina Panthers. They're 5-1. and one. Who was your bear down this week? We always start with our downs. Hmm. This is actually a this is a tough one, but it's kind of an ironic. It, my bear down that I have to I have to say, but that's actually a good thing. Is yeah. Jalen Johnson? Uh, you know, he got burned a few times. He got taken to school a little bit by. A, uh, some uh, some receivers. DJ Moore. DJ Moore. He got taken. You know, but but you know what? This is a learning experience for him. You know what? The thing. You know, I, I would have liked to have seen him um, not get beat as much and not get too uh, torched. But you know what? This. First of all, they won, so it, it's it's much better discussing it after a victory than a loss. But secondly, exactly. it's going to make him better. And when you you know he in the thing that I like about him, and even though he he got torched, you go against Mike Evans. And then uh, last week against uh, Robbie Anderson as well. All right, this dude never stops. He's still in your face. So even when he's down, he's still got the, that bravado. He's still got that. He, he's still coming at you. And that, that's that's saying a lot for a rookie because sometimes you'll see in someone's body language. And that's what I look at, not what people say. I want to see his body language. And his body language is stuff. His is to the point where, all right, you got me that one. I'll get you next one. Trust me. And so, you know, he did have a rough game. But uh, I, I just I love his attitude. I love his obviously his skill set, but his attitude is, is what I really love. So he, you know, he, he's going to be a lot a lot more bear ups in the future. But you know, he just kind of got his ass handed to him a little bit. So this is what you have to end on. I forgot okay. to tell you this part. You got to go, uh, Jalen and- Johnson. You are my bear down. That's how you got to end it when you're done. Ready? Putting them on the spot. Three, two, one. <laughs> Sorry, Janet Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Jalen Johnson, you're my bear down. There you go. That's the way the game is played. You can play the game in the chat with us. You just throw up your bear downs. For me. So should we should we bring in uh him? Cars too on this. Or? His cars he's coming he's in. Here. Is he yeah, here? He's here. Yeah, he's Look here. at this. Oh, the first ever five man five. roster. We can do it. Why not? Five man weave. You know, weave. know I am the point guard probably in this team. <laughs> you are the spud web. That's for sure. You yeah, are not the center. <laughs> what up, cars? What up? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> this is our resident. Nerd alert. There he is, That's our nerd right. alert. He usually gets a whole intro, but today we're going to keep it short. As myself would say, I'm always keeping it short, right? Here we go. But now the chain has moved, so Sean went first. I got to move him there. Then I got to move this guy there. It's like Matt Nagy's playbook. Look at this. And then we're going to move this guy here. When they think they've got us, what we're going to do is do a double reverse. That's really going to fool them. That's the Matt Nagy way. I know Cars loves that. Anyway, my bear down this week, I've gone with the layup so many times. I think the thing that's most disgusting to me is the continued obvious use of Anthony Miller. I think not only the drops, but when you see it on the tape, as the tape doesn't lie, it never does. Anthony Miller walking around not playing to the whistle, not helping out, but then to get upset and put it on yourself. If you've watched the tape, Never Lies, Sean, there's a play. 
and oh. Cole Komet is running on the, they're running that, you know, waggle route and the tight end releases. He hits Cole Komet. Cole Komet has three guys on him and M Miller was open over the top of it. It would have been a tougher throw. You take the, it's going to be a first down. The quarterback, the, Anthony Miller throwing his hands up, walking while Cole Komet's getting tackled. That kind of stuff, there's no place for it. On top of his performance, which has been subpar, in this game, that just, I just, I get so fired up with it. Anthony Miller, you are my bear down. Claudio. Oh, we're going to zig, we're going to go this way. You're going to okay. zig and zag. <laughs> like zig the and zag. Matt right. Nagy playbook, cars. All right, so, <laughs> I mean, I think... <laughs> I'm gonna go with the refs again. I did it before a few weeks back. I mean, honestly, I got to go with that. I mean, you know, because they could have cost us a game, you know, with, with some of these calls. You know, good thing we won the game, but you know, some of these calls and like Sean was saying about the hits. I mean, it's like when you, every time you see a hit, it used to be like you see a hit and you're like, you know, awesome. Now you're like you're just waiting for the flag. Right. You know it's coming, and and there's got to be something where there should be a review on some of these hits because this is just not right. I mean, these dudes are doing everything they can. And like you are saying, you can't, it's physics, man. You, you can't stop your momentum. You're going in for a hit. The dude comes down and brings his head down, the quarterback, anybody, and you hit him in the head. You can't, you can't stop that. So, you know, these refs, I just think they're taking it too far. Not just in our game. It's all over the, you know, the league, obviously, but, uh, you know, it, it's just, it's just ridiculous. So the refs, the zebras, whatever you want to call them, they're my bear down for this week. There you go, Claude. Yeah, they were bad. The interference on Sean's bear down, I thought, was the most horrific call I've seen in a long time. I mean, it gave it. It wasn't even close to being interference, and it hurts your team. These things are so important. So when I hear people say, oh, that's just football. It happens on both. That's not how this game is. Every chapter, every story is different, and that is something that should never happen. So the fact that it did, yeah, the refs were bad. The fuller call, the fumble, the the other, the interference where uh, Eddie Jackson, that one was questionable to returning it. So they were no terrible. call on them when I forgot oh, who it was. Oh, Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson. And a dude oh, climbed on his back. I thought he was oh, giving my. a piggyback ride. <laughs> oh my yeah. God! Ridiculous, and there was no flag. No you might see that and cut it out. You might see all that. Oh, Claudio's okay. giving teasers. Oh. Little teaser. Cars. Tease me, Cars. baby. Tease me. <laughs> Cars keys. What's going on? It's it's easy for me. It's coward. He was terrible, especially if you're brought in to be the run game guard on the left hand side. And one of the worst plays that you highlighted was the three yard loss play where, oh my you know, God. for a 350 pound dude, your inability to not get people on the ground is pretty appalling. Um, Other than himself. You know, yeah. He's very yeah. good. At, and he was very good at tripping up Montgomery yeah. uh, one or two times when he pulled as well. Oh. Didn't know his assignments. Phil, you highlighted one of the plays where uh, the counter when this yeah the counter where Komet is coming over and he's going after the wrong guy, right? Like which way do we go? Which way do we go? Which way? Yeah, do we go? it's <laughs> he was terrible. Uh, the play that will haunt me will forever be though that three yard loss play where he just got destroyed from go and I, I mean from Brown, right? The, the yeah, from Brown. I mean, he he just knocked him silly, and oh. and I feel bad for for David Montgomery because sixty percent of his yards are coming after contact, and it feels like half of that contact is coming behind the line of scrimmage, and it's because of guys like Coward. So uh, Rashad Coward is my bear down. Nice, good I, one, real good one. I totally see it. Totally. I thought somebody was gonna. I thought somebody was gonna take my guy. But nobody oh. did, so I'm going to jump right in here. I'm going to stay on the offensive side of the ball. Surprise, surprise. Bear downs all over the offense. But it's a little-known guy, but got to call him out. It The Demetrius Harris project for me. Oh, the drop. It's time. Oh, well, it's time. They're drawing up plays for this guy to get him the ball, and he's dropping the football. And you invest 
number 43 overall in Cole Komet. It's time. Olin Krutz mentioned it on Twitter. He's like, when you watch the tape, he said the same thing. It's time. It's time. Put the kid in there and let him go. I've seen Demetrius Harris is going to be fine in uh, even less of a reserve role. But to, to me, put the kid in there. Let him let him grow. Let him learn on the fly. Because if I'm going to see drop balls, at least, at least do it with the rookie and let him earn his stripes that way. I've seen, you know, I think they've included Harris too much. You know, single-handedly drawing up plays for this guy, and he he's not he's not coming through. I had a little bit more confidence in him initially; thought maybe he could do yeah, some things, too. but he's not he's not living up to the hype that I had for him. So, Demetrius Harris, you are my bear down. Yeah, he was he was walking sometimes too. Yeah, plays. Yeah, well, that, well, that's he not he's not, he's not alone. That's the yeah. and that's, that goes well, yeah, back I'm to what saying. we've talked about. That yeah. goes back to Cars' this guy. Uh, we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's coming! Oh, it's coming! <laughs> it's just, everybody's just I'm waiting just for the train let, to pull I'm up. Let Sean and you talk about it. Maybe he could change your mind. Now we play a little bit of the clip again, Sean, just mm-hmm. to give the the old school hip hop vibe a little bit back again. Bear up, bear down. We're gonna go bear up, and that's our positive. As Cars pointed out, it's the dyslexic version. On the first show of keeping it 100, going the opposite way. I know we had a fan chain, right? <laughs> Complaining in the YouTube channel that. Oh, you he guys... was he was he was in the chats earlier. I think it's was Alex a- Alex H. I think is his name. Yeah, he Alex, wanted to, he wanted wanted to change our about... segment. He's complaining. What was it again, Shane? He wanted to base it off the previous game. Oh, he had a whole. Yeah, it was way, it was way too way much too work, deep. Alex. <laughs> I'm already cutting 40 minutes of tape, for God's sake. Please, I can't think like that. Anyway, bear. Philatosian, Shane Marshall. The Tape Never Lies Network. A bear up! There you go. Bear up! Bear up. You like that super back. Feeling that beat? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There you go. Shane. Look at me. I get to go twice in a row. This, this is very, very easy for me. This is a guy that I brought up before the games even started this year that we needed to see that ascension. We needed to see big plays. We needed to see him be that foundational piece. And, man, 58, Roquan Smith. Oh, yeah. Was a very fun nice. Demon. Very, very I, nice. Yeah, he was everywhere. Man. That was a big boy game. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I mean, he's a guy that he's, Roquan is so country, and he was out there. I think it was Raul Bennington was on Twitter earlier today talking about it. Roquan is so country when he talks trash. You know, he puts thank you on it. You know, at the end of it, you know, he's like Rube from from Major League Two. You know, you're a great player and all, but the trade's coming through, butthead. You know that type of thing. But man, I I still want to see a little bit more. That's how much I believe in this kid. I had Roquan in that draft. I had him in my top four, I think, top four or five overall as a player in that draft, and he's so good. I mean, last year that. He had so much going on off the field. I mentally he didn't seem to be in it, but watching that game, my son is nine years old, and we sat down. We were looking at some of the all twenty-two, and then we watched the TV copy again. And man, it was it was like eye candy watching Roquan run all over the place. It the reminded screen play. Yeah, it, well, Phil, it oh, reminded man. me of going back in the day. When uh, Erlacher burst on the scene, that speed, that explosion. We haven't sideline, seen that sideline. from that position in a long time. And right now, I think Roquan is starting to believe in Roquan. And I think that that's exactly what he needs. He's starting to take ownership. He's talking. He's leading. And that's he's got to be that guy. Because as we've talked, Eddie Goldman is one of the most underrated players in this entire league and you see how important he is to this defense but Roquan stepping up is going to help there and and so Roquan Smith man you're my bear up beautiful love it 
Love hey, let me say something real quick. Go ahead, go Wait ahead. till Eddie Goldman gets back. Oof, I Wait know, till he man. gets back. If Roquan is doing what he's doing now, and that's what Bilal Nichols getting blown up a decent amount of times. Yeah. Wait till he ha- he has that run stopper, that that anchor in the middle of the line. I mean, it's going to be. I mean, it, he just literally going to. He, he might make every single tackle unless it's a pass. He literally might make every single well, run tackle with with uh, Eddie Goldman in front of him. And that's the best part. He's still only twenty three years old. It's just like yes. James Daniels. These guys are both wow. twenty when they came out. So that's wow. that's great for this franchise. Yeah, you gotta love it. You gotta love Roquan. The screenplay for me, just watching it on tape. I put it in the yeah. Patreon version. It's just that's that's just yeah, you can't. uncoachable. Yeah, you yeah, can't. He it, felt it. He saw it. it. He dips, dips underneath shoulder. this guy. <laughs> and, he gets the yeah. and then yeah, he the... just came out and he flexed. And yeah. he's like, now that's the guy. That's like you, Sean, coming on this show. You gotta have hype. You gotta <laughs> be honest. That's what you that's what you need to do. This bullshit on the offensive side someone has to wake up the echoes i know there's a lot of notre dame fan wake up the echoes so you got to start waking them up because what that is is cobwebs in your brain nobody knows what they're doing no one knows who to block that fucking anyway Roquan don't get me started on that great. counter. Yeah. Hey, don't <laughs> get me started oh, on that counter. oh my I was, god i'd rather listen to nails on a chalkboard and watch it watch that massacre oh of a, of a counter how do you not just hug that tackle and it, it just just it's Dude, I pointed be a snow it out. I'm like be all a you do is, anything in your way. I thought of cars when I was breaking it down and I swore for the first time for Chris Sandlin, one of our super fans, I said, You gotta run right off the guard's ass and get in that gap and take and then Komet would have got the sack. You would have had a big you had a play. They're always one mistake. One mental lapse, breakdown, or physical breakdown. They just can't do it. Anyway, Claudio. Oh, Bear, to me. Are you? Right. Oh, Cars, sorry. Cars, yeah. We're going Cars right. was right. next. Right. I've snaked it. Sorry. Cars. So, uh, I, as we know, I love stats. So I'm going to show the guy who doesn't show up in the stat sheet whatsoever, but Robert Quinn and the impact that he's made on this defense. I totally um, agree. Especially totally that, good. I mean, you showed that play too, right? It's oh, not, yeah. he knows even when a play is not designed for him, if it's designed to get somebody else free, right? He's going through and he's putting a hurt on people. And so he's, I mean, I, I, I always hate the narrative of, you know, we pay this guy to get numbers. We pay this guy to get sacks. No, we pay a guy to impact the offensive play calling. We pay him to get inside of a quarterback's head. And that's exactly what he's doing. If you watched early on, Okung was scared. Like he was in his head. He was oversetting on yep. protection. I mean, it was it was a great game. And, and I got giddy when we saw what was it, like the third or fourth play where it was Mac and Quinn on the, the same side. Yeah, and it, I mean, it was I, I that was absolute giddiness at that. So what he's doing and how he's doing that, like. We have a legit guy now opposite, and uh, so Robert Quinn is my my bear up. Nerd alert! This nerd is killing it right there. I <laughs> totally agree with you. I get so fired up, Sean. These guys can tell you about people using money and stats. Those things don't matter in football. What does matter is exactly what Cars was saying. i got to get used to this TV. <laughs> He was right, and I'm so proud of you, Cards. There's also one play when the Teddy Bridgewater play where he scrambles out of the pocket and he's going to score. Date of Robert Quinn comes from, he's doing a, a, a loop stunt. So he went to the opposite side, then comes back all the way around, gives chase. He misses the tackle, and, and Danny Trevathan cleans it. But to your point, if that guy walks in there, what's the score? These little things that impact this great game, the greatest game in the world, where the fat kid matters, and the not, the kicker matters, and the coach matters, and the defensive coordinator, and the replay boot, everybody matters. It's the ultimate team sport. Robert Quinn, great choice. Great when choice. He did, when he did that, that that's on that uh, double stunt, double twist. He still engaged. He had his man engaged while he went to the other guy. Some guys, <laughs> if they're smart, what they'll do, they'll leave their man, the the guy that's head up with them and slant into the other guy which leaves the guy he was on free to take the 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 guy who's looping he didn't do that 
So he held That's, on to he held on to the the guy who was directly across from him. He slanted and then took on the other guy, which freed up. I forgot who it was. Uh, it was, uh, Benal, it was Bilal. Bilal. Bilal, it was Bilal Nichols. Bilal yeah. and it freed Bilal up to do that. So that was. I mean, you talk about teamwork and, and doing it for the team. Yes, that's why. It, first of all, he's strong enough to do that. Because if he wasn't strong enough, the other guy would have would have pushed him off and been able to, to to recover on Bilal. But he he hung on to him and attacked. So he basically took up two guys and allowed Bilal to get in there. He's got that's lose. a wrestling background right there, right? Like that's a guy who's good at fighting with his hands, knows how to, is not afraid of contact, right? He's just going to make it, he's going to do what he's got to do. He, Anti-Leonard he Floyd. Oh, I mean, it's going to be fun to watch him this week, isn't it? It's really of Leonard fun. Floyd. I know Leonard's going to be motivated. Yeah. What, what, you're playing what, against, what was What that? happens in Someone true Chicago Bears fashion? He's going to go out and he'll have four and a half sacks. He'll exactly. be like, bro, where the fuck was that? <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's the first eight games of the season. It's going That's against Leno. Up and then he just yeah, kind of exactly. dips well, after. Someone said something that was so great. I think it was on the YouTube. The the um, the immovable force or the mo- movable force versus the whatever. It was great. Someone grabbed that for me. I think Sandlin could get it. Anyway, Claudio, your yes. bear up. Well, listen. I mean, we got the guy that played in Italy. You know, we were talking about soccer. I'm going with the kicker. The, the, the oh. special team. The special oh, he took his player guy. of the yeah. week. <laughs> special team player of the week. Yeah. I mean, listen, I love me some Eddie Pinero. You know, he's a great dude. But, I mean, we got to stick with Santos. This dude is clutch. He's he's taking that way that... that that agita that we get, that that you know what I mean when when we were, when a when kicks going, I I almost like I, I have the confidence now, you know when he's going up. There, I did like, turn away. Like, I was like, oh my God, yeah, I can't but watch I mean you didn't have 55. that like you know. No, I had hope. Miss. There was yeah, a hope exactly. inside hope. of me. Exactly. There was hey, fear. He and he, hope. Ki- he kicked it, but it's we're not in bad weather yet. That's I'm I'm reserving all judgment on that. That was a big kick. I think it was his 55 yard. Was it 55? Oh yeah, no, I get it. He said so. That was you know that was uh that was impressive. So you know, because at one point he was six for 16 from 40 and beyond. At one point. That's the past. Santos We're living was, in the yeah. present. <laughs> hey, we'll take the pre- it. Hey, he's follow turning it. the corner. Hey, he, goes, he wanted to eat, dude. He wanted to eat. I got yeah. a shot. All right, yeah. I got a shot. This is, yeah, I mean, hey, this is, here's where you, you got go to play Eminem. <laughs> he goes out and has a good game on Monday Night Football and just solidifies yeah. himself as yeah. the kicker in Chicago. Let's let's be well, honest. Maybe my guy you can trade Pinero like, for a tackle, an offensive tackle. Yeah. <laughs> my, guy, my guy texts me during the game. He goes, Eddie might have lost his job. I'm like, Eddie who? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you I, keep it fifty-five the yarders. Is, uh, good. Yeah, the ki- the kicker, I think, is it's it's a mental game. You know, I mean, I think oh, you're without a good, doubt, you know, you're in a good state of mind. So you know, even though his stats might have been not been good, you know, in the past, but he's got the confidence. He's got that uh, you know, mental uh, thing going for him. So, Cairo Santos. My bear up this Look week. Look at you. Sean, sorry, you are, sorry, Sean. You are sorry, the Sean. guest. I gave right, you I got, down I got first. One. I'm sure, I'm sure gonna, you'll come up with a good I one. I hope I don't go. steal yours, but for me, it's very simple. I was afraid someone was going to steal my guy, and it's number 23, Kyle Fuller. This guy is the consummate professional. I've said he's the top two corner. I'll challenge anybody in the film room to show me anything different for what he does from a physical standpoint to a mirror standpoint to a run the route for the receiver standpoint for never being afraid. This guy, as Sean eloquently said earlier, Vic Fangio challenged him in the public, in the media, something our coach needs to do to some of these players. It's enough friends. You got enough friends on your fucking phone that know that you're a millionaire coach. Let's start holding players accountable to make them play better. Look what it's done for Kyle Fuller. He is the lynch, I mean, for me right now, it's Mack and Fuller. Those are, everyone talks Eddie Jackson. For me, Fuller sets the tone. He's did it against Tampa. He did it again this weekend. He's really, really special and I think Maybe that number in Chicago is very special with Jordan and Hester and now Kyle Fuller, hopefully. What's that? Sandberg. 
Robert Sandberg, Ventura. Ryan Sandberg, right? See, yep. no nobody cares player. about the Cubs. It's fine. No, I'm a, no, I'm a Sox player. fan, but you know, game recognizes game. Yeah, game recognizes there you go. game. I respect that. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I think I want to get my son a Kyle Fuller jersey. That's how much I love this guy. So, Kyle Fuller, you are my bear up this week. And it goes back to you <laughs> to end this segment. Sean Sierra, Sports Chicago Sports Zone. No, Sports Zone Chicago. Sports Zone Chicago. I keep, I'm, I'm dyslexic. They dyslexic. keep joking. This is the segment. This is the segment. <laughs> <It's my> segment. <laughs> <laughs> so, since, <laughs> since, since Claudio took my, my first pick, my first round draft pick, and, yeah. and uh, in Cairo Santos, and then you took my second one in oh, Fuller. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I'm gonna go with I'll go a little little deeper in the secondary, and I'll go Eddie Jackson. You know that call was that was a bullshit call on the interference. Um, you know that was, oh, a, that was yeah. another pick six. You know, and Eddie Eddie Jackson is the kind of guy who 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 literally can change the game um, in a heartbeat. And you know what he does that he gets those guys hyped from the back. I haven't seen it. You know, we haven't had a safety who's that dialed in on an offense since Mike Brown and this guy, you know, you can tell how much film study this guy does um, because he's always around the ball. And, you know, so for you, so for me, Eddie Jackson, you are my bear up. Look at that. What a round this has been. We got our boy cars coming in a little bit late and no parenting, everything like that. He's typing away to Dustin. I think, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> No, our support group is after this. Don't worry about that. <laughs> a great segment there. Everyone, really, I think, in the, even in the chat, I know there was a few for, we should give some recognition this week to uh, DHC, who continues to close Absolutely. out these games. There's something about this kid. There's always one of these fabric players that Shane calls <laughs> Did that you see just, the Akeem Hicks quote quote no, on him on DHC? No, no I didn't. What did he say? Yeah, he he spoke on him and he said, "There's not a more prepared, there's not a harder working guy in practice than Houston Carson." I mean that you, you're talking about a. Let's be honest. At one point, Philadelphia tried signing him off the Bears practice squad. At one point, that was the reason that the Bears brought him, him up. up. So he was an end of the roster guy, and I mean, yeah. for one of your lead dogs to single him out, and I, I actually was bagging on the kid a little bit two games ago because he was out there getting reps, and then he ran the route for the receiver in the Tampa game and ended the game, and then you see him go out there and do this, and I mean, he was a hell of a player in college. He made oh, plays. Yeah. He was he was actually a, a peanut punch type of guy. You know, in blocked college, many plays blocked too. a lot of punts too. Yeah, was so, it William and Mary? Am I remembering yeah, correctly? Yeah, yeah, William but, and Mary. Look but at Phil, that. Phil, this speaks to what we're talking about. Cars, you and I even had this conversation when it comes to left tackle. You can't sit here and tell me for sure that if you put in you you go to Arlington Hambright and you say, "Kid, here's your shot, left tackle, Monday Night yeah. Football." Get out there and make me proud. You don't know how he's going to react. Exactly. I mean, is it going to be worse? Who knows? Why don't, why don't you I just don't... say, "Hey, listen, here's your one shot. If you screw you, if you screw up, you're cut." That's a crazy yeah. idea. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Imagine that. Put a burner his ass. And yeah, so exactly. you know what? And you know what? Pressure, pressure makes diamonds. So you know what? You're going to sink or swim, and we're going to find out right now on Monday Night Football. And because yeah. you're going to end up coming around Aaron Dallas, you're going to do a twist at some particular point of the game. All right, he's going to come. He's going to go outside, and, and so we're going to see what you're made of. So you, you, you better be ready. And here it is. This is your here's your shot. And, and that's it. The, and you know what? Here's put it here's on him right there. Here's the the conversation with the inc incumbent right here. <laughs> 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 stay That's up, it. he's saying. Stay Get, up on your feet. Stay on your feet. Stay low with a flat back. Fire out. Show some pride. I am coaching him during the game. I'm like, I, I talk to offensive line coaches in high school. I talk in college and pro. All of them can't believe that that's what you're putting out there at left tackle, especially with Foles, who's been known to be injured and in critical situations. Yep. Yep. Matt Nagy doesn't give him any help. 
Like, uh, we know he's bad or what? Can you just have, like, fucking chip for him to help him? Nope. <laughs> Third and seventh. Big. We need a fucking drive. Charles has it all, but no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. It drives me. And, and of course, we're going to be on Monday night, and they're going to trot Charles Leno out there. He's going to have two false starts, one hold, and everybody's going to be DMing. My fucking DM box is going to be lit up because everybody thinks of me every time they hear this fucking guy, the walrus, speed bump. Phil, Charlie, here's your, Usher, here's your uh, the quote that you butchered Okay. pretty bad right? here a couple I of minutes ago it? from... Yeah, social media extraordinaire Chris Sandlin sent it to us, and okay. here's what you're talking about. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Unstoppable the, force meets no. the movable object. Thank you. Force. Unstoppable the force. Stoppable. Unstoppable. 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 Okay. Fu- <laughs> Hofstra <laughs> University, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Shit's I need my glasses. There. I don't. I can't. <laughs> I'm trying to find glasses that I can wear that won't reflect back because I I need That'll reading glasses. Yeah, it's tough. Hey, get those. You that, know what, that's, before. That's a lens, so there's gonna be reflection. Your ear. No, you're there is like gonna... there's like a TV light for like people on the... television. I swear, Uh-oh. they're expensive though, so I'm trying to find a pair. Anyway, listen before uh, Sean leaves. I want the this chat room has been talking about this Bills guard that was released, Quentin Spain. Quentin Spain. So we go. You guys want to just touch on that? And sure. just, got it. You gotta. You, know, I mean, you, gotta you gotta try. Think? You gotta try. The Bears were interested in him before. At one point, uh, around when he was coming out in the draft, I know there was some talk and uh, everybody, had, you know, meetings leading up to the draft. So that was a guy that the Bears were looking at. He signed a three-year extension, I believe, just this offseason. Correct. With with Buffalo. But, I mean, your offensive line is in shambles so much. If the Bears do not reach out to, to Spain and his representatives, it's a... <laughs> It's a huge check mark on Ryan Pace's forehead. I mean, he's running out of spots up there for these check marks. Let's be I honest. I need to call Spain and have some tapas brought in here so we can have <laughs> <laughs> some jamon and serrano, jamon serrano, some manchego cheese, some <laughs> tostones. What's this? I think I need to parody that song. Let's get Leno physical. Yeah, you right? got to because every time, do it. every time we play that, we get copyright infringement. <laughs> 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 the one holding his feet. Nagy, the one holding his feet. Is he the one going? Nagy like never like holds anyone's feet by so, the fire. He's got to be something. He's the one yeah. praising them. Like <laughs> no, so I mean, Spain is, but Spain is a pass blocking guard. He's not much of a run blocker. So you know, we have to take that now. Supposedly, Coward is supposed to be a run blocking guard, what? and he is a. <laughs> Uh, hey, we'll take him. Hey, listen, guard. we we'll take... throw the ball 43 times You're in right. a game. We're run... We need a pass blocker, too, inside. Absolutely. So, I mean, if, if but that's what, you know, that just sets us up for, for that. So, I think I think he's definitely in play, but that, I mean, that's who that guy is. That's that's a that's a pass blocking guard. Well, well, what's going to happen with Alex Bars? Okay, they, you, put, you put him oh, in. Don't get me started. Don't get it there. So he he had a. How did he of, lose his job? He was he held one, accountable he for two plays. Two plays, and then you don't hear about him the rest of the game, which is a great thing when you don't hear about offense. You don't hear an offensive right. lineman's name, and then now then now the the project Howard starts again. You know, I I don't understand what it is. Is he mad because you know he's a Notre Dame guy and he stands, or or what's what's the issue? You know, because I think they need because you need a run guard first because that's your run game. Your two yeah. guards in your center is the run game. The tackles, exactly. they're not your run game. The run game is the two guards in the center, and they need to they need to shore that up and tighten that up because then we won't have we won't have David Montgomery shaking breaking tackles three and a half yards deep in the backfield. Okay, he'll be breaking tackle. He'll be getting to the second, even third level before he's got to deal with somebody. How, so you better how? get you better get bars in there, and because he's got a nasty disposition. And last time I checked, and then and all the offensive linemen I played with, give me a guy who's who's a nasty son of a bitch who likes to who likes to move exactly. people. Exactly. Exactly. How, well, I how, wish I wish that good. white hair would step up though. Well, That's my big thing. Oh, he's been he's hurt. Not just, too. He's, he's yeah, definitely I mean, he's, taking a step back. Yeah. And that was my guy. I mean, he yeah. looked it and he looks to me like he's just not comfortable at all in the center position. Like right now, you know, we need pulling guards and something that a Fetty's not been very good at. It's not something that Coward is. He's, he's been very on good at. and I know this 
shouldn't matter where you want to play, but Cody Whitehair is on record calling himself a guard, saying he's most comfortable playing left guard. Mm -hmm. He said that multiple times, but this this is something that we've seen so often in Chicago, and it's not just from this coaching staff. I mean, it goes back to when Kyle Long got here every fucking year. They're flip flop. They're putting them all up and up and down the line. Cody Whitehair, they've done it. I mean, you're seeing it with a, a backup like Coward. They're they're filling these guys in everywhere. James Daniels flip flopped, and it's there. That's an issue, Phil. I that's mean, an you, issue. You have to let these guys settle into a spot. And I mean, you're paying Cody Whitehair to be one of the best players at his he position. He was a great center on tape. Honestly, yeah, he was. When Jordan Howard was here, this motherfucker was taking linemen and throwing them around. Now he had a kid. They all have lives. I get it. But the reality is, you can't, Sean. You know, you can't run stretch and inside zone and have your center getting pushed back or standing straight. <laughs> all of a sudden, that's the whole concept. Is the center has to get a little bubble. You got to create. A bubble, and that's when your running back can read. It's we all about that. Exactly. So we find a lane. That's it's amazing what happens if your blockers are on the other side of the line oh of scrimmage engaged in someone instead of on the ground two yards behind the line of scrimmage. It's amazing what happens. When fans are DMing me, <laughs> telling me Jay Hood is on ESPN, talking like David Montgomery is a bust. He yeah. can't read a hole. He sucks. And thousands and hundreds of thousands of people in the city are believing that. That shit is ne negligent on that kid. Yeah, that's because Madden that philosophy. That's that what that kid. is. It's Madden philosophy, but man. They, they how go there good they is look this at his, kid? Oh. Dude, how good is this running him? back? Is so good. Just like Jordan Howard. I'll Me and Shane you, led the I'll parade I'll guarantee you if we had Jay Hood on this show... He would. he would sit down and tell you that Tariq Cohen is a better running back than David Montgomery. <laughs> I guarantee it. And it's, ba and it's based on one thing. It's based on speed, and that's it. And that's people fall into this trap all the time, Phil. We know oh it. You know, God, it's it like when we're talking about Khalil Mack. They look in the box score. Oh, Mack didn't have a sack today. He fucking sucks. It's. <laughs> Ridiculous. He didn't have three sacks today. Oh, Fire him. Cut him. Guy. Yeah. Yeah, get out of here. Redo that Here's contract. Another. Montgomery yeah, sucks. Yeah, He's about that the unapologetic truth. See, here, this here, is the kind of the, stuff. Here's the problem. Like, you know, when, when you, you and I talk, Phil, like I, I told you, like, I can't have conversations with people like that. Like, yeah, I'll look yeah. at them and, and just look, just give them that look like, you're serious? Okay. I need to go because I've lost enough brain cells playing football. I don't need to talk to you. <laughs> well, it's just, it's just like the Mac, the Mac guy. The Mac people saying Mac is overrated because they're looking at stats. That's what they're looking yeah. at. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're obviously they're not. Stats. Obviously they're not looking at the people horse collaring Khalil Mack or grabbing around the waist <laughs> yeah, or his arm. Yeah. Yeah. You know they're yeah. not. But I tell you know. what, you go into all of our wins. Montgomery made at least one, two huge plays. Huge plays to win us those games. So, He's taking you know, contact behind the line yeah, of scrimmage I mean, more often than he is across the line of what, scrimmage. What was the he, stat, cars for him? This, Zero point two yards before, before contact. contact. Zero point two. Oh, that's, that's that like right scrimmage. there should be the unapologetic truth. Ken Schaefer, look at this quote. This is why he loves this network. You tell it like it is with proper now. That's why Sean fits right in here because you keep it 100. That's why we titled this show what it was. The reality is, let's look at this. I want to say one last thing about David Montgomery, then we'll move on. There's a, a, an ability to be a great runner and be an instinctive athlete. Then there's an ability to be physical in contact. And then there's an ability to keep your balance. These things that Walter Payton had, this kid has. What he doesn't have is the blazing speed, like Shane said, and neither did the greatest to ever that's, tote the rock. And that's completely overrated. I mean, if we're exactly. being if we're being honest, exactly. everybody's like, "Oh, he can't, he can't." You see that catch? He doesn't have a sixty-yard touchdown run. Who does? Who does? <laughs> he catches the ball. Oh man! Outside his body and is preparing to spin in contact because he's so prepared athletically. When that, that happens, that play should never 
ever be overlooked. No. That was the best play I of the game. I sent out a immediately when that happened, and I said, <laughs> Bears fans, mark it down. That's one of the most underrated plays that you'll oh, see in this game, no matter what. Yeah, I said, I'll bring oh, it up awesome. and show it to you. You know, the, if you look at some of the, you look at the greatest who ever did it, you know, Walter Payton, um, yes. he was, I think he was like a 4-6 guy. Okay, Emmett Smith, he was a 4-6, 4-7 guy. Okay, I mean, granted, he had uh, the Great Wall of China in front of him. I but could have run story. behind that line for 2,000 yards behind Eric Williams and Larry Allen. Like that. Yeah, but <laughs> would've got, you probably would have gotten caught a lot sooner than Emmett Smith. Nate Smith, Newton. Nate oh, Newton. Yeah. But hey, but let's not get it twisted. When Emmett, when Emmett got in the secondary, very rarely did he get caught. Very no. rarely did he get caught, and he Somebody only ran a Nate, four, Did you say Nate Newton? Smoke weed every day. I mean, just because you're you're caught in a minivan with like 300 pounds of weed, hey. if you wanna, if you wanna, you're gonna go down, you go down something. swinging with the yeah, whole I fucking mean, plantation. Him and, we go him aggressive and Carlos, here. Him and Carlos, uh, uh, step on the wiser. And those yeah. put out yeah. big, put out big, maybe. Yeah. Listen, become a Patreon subscriber. Go over to the Patreon channel, Shane. Put that. I think it's where is it, Shane? Get it up there, or Claudio. That, you yeah. want to see what David Montgomery is dealing with? All you have to do is go to www.thetapeneverlies.com. Sign up. You're going to get advanced, in-depth. Today, Shane knows, I put 16 hours of work into editing 40 minutes of coaching analysis. Stuff that you don't get anywhere else. You've seen it on our YouTube page. That's the condensed version. I think it was 17 minutes. Think about 40. Go over there. Check us out. We're going to be doing live shows, pop-up shows, Q&As, all of this stuff that we got planned former NFL coaches coming on to break down tape, all this stuff that's going to happen. And we got cars, and we're going to have other guests coming on, breaking down the draft like nobody else out there. I'm sure Sean will be back with us talking draft, free agency. You name it, we're all about football. There's no other talk there. On this show, I can talk about Netflix. I'm going to talk about a great movie that you might want. And we're going to talk, Claudio's going to talk about his favorite strand of weed. That's what this is. Keeping it 100. Claudio the Barber. Wait, I'll, I'll let me just put this strands? up real quick. Wait a let me minute. Let me put this what? up real quick. Listen. <laughs> I think. Is oh, my God. I think Unap you just, you just. Listen, hold on. You gotta change your name trolls. from unapologetic truth to unintelligent truth, bro. Okay, <laughs> with shit like Sean, this. All right. Well, it's calling Listen, out the bro. fans. I'm you're sorry, dude. You're, it's I think you're ridiculous. in the wrong network, buddy. I it's think there's ridiculous. another. Yeah, this one is you called the tape. Just, you're talking. We already discussed it's that. Ridiculous. It's yeah. it's unbelievable the ignorance when it comes to stat versus situations and tape breakdown. That's gonna tell you the truth. I don't give a shit. If it was Ezekiel Elliott or whoever you think is the best back in the NFL in the Bears backfield right now, they are going to be struggling as well. It is a problem. It is a huge problem. And it has me fired up. Don't blame it on David Montgomery. Phil, Change real, that narrative. Real quick, yeah. the Bears are going to be trying out an offensive guard, and we have video of him. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope not. Let's hope not. Hey, if, if that sucker can move people, I'll that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I had some offensive linemen with belly just like that. They can, move, they can move motherfuckers, and that's what I'm talking about. Hey, you get on that 45, 45 degree track, yeah. anything in your way gets taken up. Oh, yeah. It gets taken up all the time, every week, every week. Are we moving on to the next segment, Shane? Let's do it. Before we do, let's remind people of this. Where you can find this show, we got to take care of some business. Every week, after every Bears game, this show, Bears Hour Live, every week. So no matter what day, it could be Thursday night game, Shane's staying up late. It could be Monday night game, Shane's staying up late. He's getting up early to deliver the mail. But this Monday night, we'll be live immediately after 
the final whistle blows on Bears Hour Live. It's the best Chicago Bears postgame show on the planet. Bar none, it's Bears Hour Live immediately after each and every Bears game with host Shane, the smartest man, and draft Dr. Phil Lotoshin. Every Sunday, Monday, or Thursday, immediately after the Bears game, your guys, draft Dr. Phil and Shane Marsaw are live on Bears Hour Live. Subscribe to the show via the Tape Never Lies Network, which can be found on YouTube, Facebook Live, Twitter, and Twitch. It's the best Chicago Bears postgame show on the planet, Bears Hour Live. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. It's Bears Hour Live. Immediately after every Bears game, we've seen the numbers don't lie there. We're so proud of you guys joining us. We were going to put that show behind the Patreon wall, but you guys spoke up, showed up, and showed us, hey, we want this here, so we are going to be there right after Rams, Bears, Monday night. Real quick, one other promo. Our guys, we're broadcasting here. This show, Keeping It 100, is sponsored by Shy City Sports. And my boys over there, they have a podcast, the Bearfront Podcast. Go check them out, shycitysports.com. Steven and Nick, they do it right. That's good dudes here. Shy City Sports. Hey, it's Steven. And Nick from the Bearfront Podcast from ShyCitySports.com. Every week, join us for in-depth Bears talk as we break down the matchups ahead of each week's game. And join us following every game for what we saw and what we wish we had seen on the Hurry Up Recap. So subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and stay tuned to ShyCitySports.com for the latest from the Bearfront Podcast. And now, back to Keeping It 100 with Draft Dr. Phil Atoshin and Shane, the smartest man, Marsaw. Shy City Sports, Bear Front Podcast. Oh, you got to love it. Those guys Did are great. Did he get a permission slip to speak on a no- not normal podcast evening? Was that, did, did we have to get proper permission? Or how does that go exactly? Was he off the hayride? Was he on the hayride? Yes. Just just curious. He was, he's he's he's, he's going to come back on our show, too, because he wants to yeah, we're, we're We're working behind the scenes with his wife to see when we can make that happen. <laughs> 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 All right, Claudio, you yeah, got to set I'm, up our next segment. Yes, you have sir. it? I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I just want to okay. get the time in down here. Yeah. Well, every week, Shane Marsaw scours the Internet. Some of you, this is his your favorite part of our show. It really is something special because Shane is always not only delivering the mail and delivering nuggets of wisdom, but he's also showcasing what people should and shouldn't do when it comes to Twitter. This is called Dumbest Tweets of the Week. And here it is. Dumbest Tweets of the Week. Claudio, you got that music for me? <laughs> got it? You hear it? No. Nope. No. no. We it's don't playing. hear it. Did you oh, check okay, the sorry. box? Yep. There we go. There we Rewind go. it back. A little programming right. issue. Yeah, He's sorry. still learning. He's a new producer. So, Sean, every week we do mm-hmm. a little poem for each part. Shane's going to give a dumb tweet. And then he's going to give a positive tweet, and we're going to react to these dumb tweets. Are you ready for my poem? I'm ready for your poem. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Charles Leno says, which way did he go? Yeah. (laughs) He's the smartest man. On white hair. On coward. On Leno of Fetty and Massey. Could someone block somebody? Cause our QB's fucking tired of getting knocked on his assy. <laughs> He's the smartest man and this is his dumbest tweet of the week. Shit. 
Oh, the fade would have been good, right. Claude. You would have did yeah, it perfect. Claude, I was, listen, I was going Drop. for the fade, and I clicked. Claude was so Two close, and then he went all mailey on us and said the wrong fucking show. Que cosa, eh? Oh, yeah. Que cosa, eh? Vaffangulo. Que cosa, ragazzo, eh? Well, when, we, when there's dumb tweets, one person comes to mind, but this is a two-banger here on one tweet. So I'm going to pop it up here. You want to take those comments down. Michael Kist, at Michael Kist NFL. There isn't a bigger paper tiger than the 5-1 and one Chicago Bears. There may have never been a bigger 5-1 and one paper tiger in history. This thing is going to crash and crash soon. And then everybody's favorite, Peter Bukowski, chimed in. Peter Bukowski, who will be live on air with Phil and I on Packers Week. So that's oh, going to be really? a bunch of fun. Yeah. Well, it's yeah, tentatively. I'll believe it when I he's, see it. He's yeah, agreed. Yeah. We've we've done we've played been down this road before with Peter. He he's might get a, something in his eye. He could at night. he could play for Matt Nagy. No accountability. But anyways, <laughs> Peter Bukowski replied to that tweet and said, "Look at the, you could keep the comments off there, Claude. Oh, there you go. I'm not doing it. Oh, that was but, me. Sorry. Okay, that was funny. Look sorry. at their schedule. Winter is coming." Um, oh my god what i what i will never understand is these bloggers fanboys whatever you want to call them i understand everybody's got their favorite team but d-bags yeah exactly <laughs> peter bukowski just got done watching tampa bay boat race his team mm-hmm. green bay yeah. well, and the first them. fucking thing that he does is runs to twitter to comment on chicago why? Because he's got his like, ass handed to him and he has nothing else to say. Exactly. How and that's, could you, though? That's what I, what I said, and I'll repeat myself here again. Everybody that wants to bag on Chicago, you better pray to the football gods that they don't figure out their offense. Because if they do, everybody's in fucking trouble in this league. And that includes Word. everybody up top. If they figure it out, have fucking fun. That's all I'm going to say. So Peter Bukowski and Michael Kist, dumbest tweets of the week. Um, unbelievable. Hey Shane, the Bears are up on top. Ain't, ain't too many other teams up yeah. on top of the Bears. <laughs> hey, ain't too yeah. many teams, and and those teams better watch it too. So yeah. whoever's Last... undefeated, because we we get a chance to take out one of those undefeated teams in a couple weeks down in in, in Trashville or Smashville, depending on how you look at it. Yeah, uh, we can take out one of those teams. I'm a little concerned, but we still have that chance if that offense gets it figured out. Psh, man. Hey. Whew. You you punch one one team in the mouth that's up on top, it sends a message to the entire Yeah, NFL. it does. You you can you can sit there and say whatever you want to say about Chicago, their offense, their woes there. If Nick Foles gets hot, we've seen it before. What can happen? They got to get the shit settled on the offensive line. I mean, you have to have some semblance of a running game to make this work. But like I said, if they, if they go out there and figure shit out, and they have that defense backing them up, it's going to be a lot of teams that are in trouble. And not a lot of these teams are going to want to face a Chicago Bears team if they figure it out on the other side of the ball. So, Claudia, you still have to play the music for the second part. Oh, I gotcha. I was trying to text you, but you didn't see it. No, my phone's off, so I didn't see it. I'm keeping it 100 in front of everyone. (laughs) Steph is learning his new role. I love it, though. So share that up. But I want to say this. It's always used in cliche in regards to defense wins championships. And the reality is defenses travel no matter where they go. So when bullshitter, fanboy, blogboy fucks talk shit that have never put a pair of fucking helmet or cleats on and and are talking from a place where you just got your ass... that's like me during, you know, football season missing a Bears game to go see the new Marvel movie. That ain't happening with me. I'm fucking, I'll never miss a Bears game. I can't even miss a play. So these types of guys that they just got boat raced, to use your term, which I love, and you're going on Twitter to talk shit to Bears? I mean, that's ridiculous. Paper Tiger. We'll see. We'll see. I... I I always concern myself with the o- the offense. There's no doubt about it. But you know, we'll you see. know, the, they need to do those people need to go 
Go back, do some meth, and kiss their cousin back there in West Green Bay. All right, we good. We don't need to hear about you anymore. <laughs> it was a lovely sight to see that score. Oh, like, it, was, oh it was even better to watch. Aaron, Aaron was whining. I took my sons to a haunted house, and I had it on my phone, just seeing him cry, complain to the ref. Turn it up a little bit, Claude. Here we go. Part two. We're gonna do the positive tweet. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Claude putting in the Charles Leno type effort with his new <laughs> job. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let me fall down. Uh, <laughs> he's the smartest man. He's the man who helped get redemption for Bob Marley. And like everyone on this show, they aren't soft like fucking Speed Bump Charlie. He's the smartest man, and this is his best tweet of the week. Oh, there's the fade. Look at him. He stepped oh, yeah. He's up. He's learning. He's He's learning. Stepping up. Stepped up like hey, bars. Stepping you held him accountable. You held him accountable. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta call him out. It happened live on the Results. air. Accountability. That's what happened. Take down Results. the take down the comment there. So I can put this tweet up so everybody oh, can see yeah. it. Get rid of the com. There yep. you go. So here we go. Friend of the show, Dustin Reagan Padilla. Oh, look at him. He's making got, a tweet. I of love the his week. Twitter handle. Yeah, if you guys want to follow him, you can follow him at, at Cars is my dad. But <laughs> he gets a raise in his allowance for this one. That's for but sure. This is a real thing here, guys. This can actually happen in the NFC East. Four and twelve, four and twelve, four and wow. twelve, three, twelve, and one. The Giants by default would win the division championship because they went four and two in the division at four and twelve. Oh my god. I don't see a problem with that at all. I think that's exactly <laughs> what the NFL. Can you imagine wanted. this can you imagine the scene? In the locker room when they're handing out the the division champs gear here's your hat you know you guys just finish off your four and twelve campaign and you're putting on your division champs hat your oh, division i think champs it legally gear. has to be like least sucky team of the oh. nfc east it can't even be division champs it's like we sucked a little <laughs> less ass than everybody else the least the nfc least exactly <laughs> holy <laughs> shit that is That's amazing what? It I mean, is. Been, it really I've always, is. I've been saying for a long time, though. I mean, I don't know how you guys feel about this. I think they should get rid of divisions. Just do AFC, NFC, the top teams, go to the playoffs. They've I mean, been talking the about side. that. They've been talking about that. If this happens, this is going to spur that. Oh, I agree there. Yeah, how many, there, teams, yeah, how many it'll... teams you thinking, though, uh, Claudio? How many teams well, you thinking, bro? Because you, well, you're going to need... Amount of, same amount of playoff teams. Same thing. Okay. Just... Okay. just you just go the records, you know, the best okay. in the conference. Just take the top seven in, the top, in each because conference, even though, yeah. Listen, it happens no almost every year. It might be only one game difference or something, but there's always a team that has a better record at second place in a division that's, mm -hmm. you know, better Yeah, the, the Bears played the team. Seahawks in the playoffs that one year. They were 8-8. Eight and eight. Yeah. And, I mean, that was everybody's like, holy shit, these guys are 500. They're in the wow. playoffs. Can you can you imagine facing a 4-12 and 12 no. team in the, play, in the NFL playoffs? Yeah, but, that might not be real realistic for twelve, but they it could be real at seven and nine. I mean, you know, even seven oh, and nine. You've seen it. We've I mean, seen the, seven and nine. Yeah, the yeah, Bears yeah. have yeah. the Bears have yeah. missed the playoffs multiple times at ten and six. Yeah, it's yep. That's you know, fucking ridiculous. There is yeah, they, they there to. is cars is correct. There there will be some validity to a discussion beyond with these fucking millionaire billionaire owners if four and twelve and imagine being, you know, a, a tight race in another, you know, conference, uh, and you are a fucking ten win team, and four and twelve is getting in over you. And you got to watch yeah. Mike McCarthy on the sideline for oh. a playoff game. Oh, oh man, man, that would fish be glorious. You talk about a bad situation. That oh, my that God. Arizona game. <laughs> Arizona's trying to run run the friggin' ball just to end the game. Third down and. Kenyon Drake what was it? I don't know, sixty-nine or seventy-nine yards untouched on third down. I said, boy, if that if that doesn't show yeah. you a lot about that team, holy that would cow. it would really put the NFL on notice because of not only the fans but the teams that are working that hard 
to get to 10 wins, 9 wins, whatever it is, to be overlooked for a team that's 4 wins, uh, that would be honestly disgusting at this point. I never thought I'd live to see the day that this happened, but it goes back real quick. It makes me think of this conversation that I had with my dad. It's like, and, and Sean mentioned it tonight, we're starting to become pussified. Like yeah. we can't be physical, we can't hit, we can't have, think about the Bears, they didn't have a fucking practice. They had fucking six walkthroughs with Foles. It's like, how is this even possible when you're playing a sport? I don't even think it was six, was it? Wasn't it like three? It was three. So they had, uh, he had three padded practices between <laughs> the oh Falcons God. game and the the Bucks game. So wow. between two games, and they did, and none of them came before the Bucks because they were right. recovering off of a three day week. I told my buddy, it's like you being an IT guy. And you, you go to work, you got no computers. You just sit there. Don't worry. We'll come back tomorrow. <laughs> we'll have a computer on Friday. That'll be game day tech talk. It's like, how do you do that? This is the game. You got to go out there. You got to put your pads on. You got to go live. You got to do teamwork and go phys be physical because Sundays are what it is. So I think the C CBA... And how this union has structured and fought and the money and this and that. At some point, we got to get a little bit back to football and get rid of some of this. Let's give everybody a fucking award. Let's now stretch that into the NFL. And we can't touch a quarterback a certain way. Like, we've defenseless been fucked out of the Yeah, defenseless receivers who weren't defenseless. <laughs> to Claudio's point, the college game... They're reviewing these illegal headshots. You need to do that in the NFL if it, the sky games are judge. so crit Yes. XFL Sky Judge should should have been implemented years oh ago. Oh, my God. It, it's if me, you, Sean, Shane, fucking Thunder Girl in the chat, Cherie, Dan Rodriguez in the chat, if they could see it, Mo Beerman, they could see it at home. How can we not have somebody in the box, in the booth, with all those HD, or now it's fucking 4K TVs? They can make the call and correct it. doesn't it. matter. I mean, no, they can't. Yeah, you I have, mean, we've seen you it, have the right? head guy out there, Phil, seeing it in 4K. The whole world is seeing it, and he's explaining it to you with something that didn't happen in Pereira. He's like, oh, yeah, you see right here. Right? I mean, you see, he led with his shoulder into the neck area, <laughs> yeah. and then do you remember? It was... no, they gotta hire people. They can't hire the guys from PFF. They can't. They can't hire these fucking kids. Do you out remember of the Zach Miller touchdown when he blew oh, out his knee? Oh my down god! Oh, yeah. the, that, they called you it remember? the fucking Magruder film. Yeah, who was the like... who was the the head <laughs> official guy at the time? Isn't they he ended still? Up replacing him. No, they ended up. Did they, they reassign him? I, What's his name? Oh, Al Riveron. Yeah, Al hello, River. everybody. Hello, this is everybody. Al Riveron. This is Al Riveron. Yeah, and he, remember, he did the same thing. He was taking you through frame oh by God. frame, and he's like, That's you the see worst. right there? Back the ball clearly the came loose. You couldn't see <laughs> anything. Back and to yeah. the left. It was the Seinfeld <laughs> episode with <laughs> Keith Hernandez. <laughs> that was one magic loogie, I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't give a fuck that he smokes weed. They all smoke weed. Smoke weed every day. We found the one thing Claudio's good at. <laughs> Is it ever going to get old? No. It's never, know. It's it's never, never going to get old. No. That's just the cue for Sean to know. Everyone in America's favorite segment on this show. They love it. They yeah. live for it. Yeah. It started out real quick, the backstory. It started out with nervousness. Claudio had a plan. He shares with... He's the new guy. I don't want to step on your toes, but I got a good plan. And then me and Shane are like, yeah, sounds good. You're going to do it. Well, no, yeah, I want you idea, guys wait, to do it. Yeah, my <laughs> idea was don't, everybody don't be involved. In everybody. But we put you it know, all on the Claudio. The day before the show, the day before, let's keep it 100. The day before the show, oh, yeah, Claudio, we're going to do Cut It Out. It's great. It's all you. That's it. <laughs> That's how we do it. That's how we but do it. But you know it. what? I, I appreciate it. Learn on the, the fly. Chance. I'm learning. Swim. I'm trying. I'm getting better. Accountability. 
There Tom you go. Is that, this is what pot. Leno needs to figure out. <laughs> Nagging Leno needs to figure this out. Some, some people okay. take, but, some people take their kids to swimming lessons. Phil and I pick our kids up and fire them into the pool. They'll exactly. figure it out. <laughs> With 20-pound ankle weights yes. just to make sure they exactly. really hurt So, listen, well. just before yeah. my segment, though, we're going to have time for the for the naggy talk between you guys or what? The the naggy uh, debate? Or are we going to do that after? Um, it's getting late. I think. Okay, because people were people were asking for it, so that's fine. Yeah, talk, I mean, we 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 covered a lot of it anyway. All right, all right. But. I think cars is conceding. To, the white flag has been raised. <laughs> I think everybody in the world. <laughs> knows. I got my popcorn ready. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Let's Do go. Want to talk about naggy cars? Quick, real You're, quick, real quick. You're Have you ever it. made a Do cookie it. without an oven or <laughs> flour or sugar? Have you ever made that? Yeah, I went to the store and I bought one. I thought yeah, because <laughs> yeah, like we have no ready-made cookies. Line. They're vegan? Are they vegan cookies? Vegan cookies, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and how shitty are they? Not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> You have the. <laughs> Forget it. Let's move on. To this. Exactly. Exactly. Everyone's that laughing. Was, that was, that was well played. Popcorn, that was well played. I love you. We well, get it. Cars is a big naggy supporter. He's the only one oh, on no. the show. Yes. No, it's not. Listen. You, you have how the twenty. Cars, how at me, boy? How at me, man? What's going on? Let me hear your perspective, Papa. We you have the twenty-second highest-paid line in the NFL, with okay. one third of that going to Charles Leno. Okay. Two thirds of that goes to Bobby Massey, with Leno. You have basically an offensive line that you have invested zero picks in, for the most part, right? Mm-hmm. Whitehair was two years or what? Five years ago who is yeah. supposed to be Jason Spriggs. You have James Daniels, who's out. You haven't drafted a tackle at all until this season, which is which is actually Simmons because they want to move him oh, right Tyo inside. Tyo Don't forget him. Oh, no. Yeah, we forget about him. <laughs> that um, was year one. Yeah, that was Pace's first year, I believe. Fabulous. We, we have made... Fabulous shit. <laughs> oh, God, he was terrible. He was as useless as that guy you showed. He actually, believe it or not, didn't... Isn't he the... Where did he, he didn't get, remember he missed the plane or something? Yeah, remember but he got something? he was in like some crazy of course. shit. Yeah, there he had a lot of, of unapologetic stuff truth on. agrees with you. It's time to move on on he's this a troll. topic. He's a troll. <laughs> no, if he All agrees right. with cars. Yeah. Let's move yeah, on. That dude's a troll. Unapologetic <laughs> truth. Unapologetic yeah. goof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look out of here. Yes, it's confirmed. <laughs> yes, Mr. 300. I saw Carter Carter. Really want to shout out you guys. The overwhelming amount of support that we have seen in this first week of opening up Patreon has been amazing. Uh, we love cars. He's our boy. We don't agree here, but we get it. And we'll continue. And you know what? Matt Nagy's story is not you know, over. I just see it completely different. And, and that's what it is for now. And we'll get into it more. I'm, Olin Krutz said, tell cars I'm coming for him on November 4th. He wants to see No problem. <laughs> no he wants problem. to take you to the, he wants to take you to the firing range like he did Fred Miller. <laughs> Fred Miller. <exactly. laughs> no, cars will not show up that day. And I don't blame you, cars. I wouldn't blame him either. I'm not I'll see that. I have no problem with it. Listen, the Patreon network, www. Uh, tape never lies.com unbelievable go over there sign up you're going to get advanced instruction teaching it's all about analysis breaking down the bears in an educated not formulated by stats one iota it's all about the tape it's all about this show and having fun as well as getting in depth analysis there so really appreciate all of you guys doing that now finally Claudio, yes. you put away your popcorn. Yep. We got Sierra, the freaking factor, back on with us. You got to perform your segment. Great for this guy because everybody in America or everybody that loves the Tape Never Lies Network loves Cut It Out. Hey, Cut It Out. What are you talking about? 
with Claudio the Barber. Hey, you, you gotta let me talk, Phil. Hey, you gotta let me speak. Claudio is gonna be bringing a new sense to keeping it a hundred. It's cut it out with Claudio on the Tape Never Lies Network. Oh yeah! Right, look, Cut it out it. with look Claudio. Look at this! I got new scissors. Look at these. Wow! Very awesome. nice. Very. Yeah. He's got the new we scissors for the segment. Ho uh, Halloween to get some costumes, and these were there, and I'm like, perfect for, for the perfect. show. Look at you. Yeah. Put it on the t the uh, tax sheet. We'll we'll claim yeah, we'll it. Write later. it off. We'll write <laughs> it off. <laughs> Claudio's working. Above and beyond a Call of Duty. Call exactly. Duty. Yeah. Actually, shout out to my wife. She actually picked them up. She, oh, she actually texted that. me from there. She's like, oh, look at these. I'm like, let's go. Pick them up. Well, They're Claudio's bucks, a so. barber in Connecticut. Claudio, do you want to share before we start yeah. your segment? Next yeah, we'll, week's we'll show. Tease, next let's week's tease so a little bit. I might be this. Claudio the barber, but I met this guy uh, through... Um, you know, barbershop uh, antiques, you know, he, he collects them and we met, whatever. And he happens to be not just any barber. He is the Bears barber. The barber at Hallis Hall, Lawrence Funk from Funk's mm -hmm. Barbershop. Yep. He's my boy. The dude is a great dude all around. Great barber. His shop is sick. And he cuts a lot of the players that we talk about. He cuts their hair. And it, it's cool. And he's in the chat. I seen him talking. Oh, um, look at him. He's yeah, here. he was in the chat. I, you know, I didn't want to, we were talking. I didn't bring him up. But uh, we're going to have him on next week. And uh, I think it's going to be a, a pretty cool guest to have on. You know, he's got some, he, he sees, you know, as barbers, you know, we, we're we also psychologists and, and, and uh, analysts. And, you know, the, the people we cut, they talk about everything to us. So who knows what, uh, what kind of info he got on some people. So. We'll see what he says, and we'll see what he brings. Barbers he's a talk, great dude. right? Exactly, yeah. You know, you can't put out too much out there, but, you know, uh, I'm sure he'll have some cool uh, cool stories. So, you know, he's going to come on next week. He's a great dude. That's going to be exciting. Yeah. Uh, wow, I'm just curious of how my they dream do job, their hair. My dream job. Before I met him, I told my wife, I'm like, my dream job is to be the bar Bears barber at. And this now, is I'm going to put together probably a little. probably have to move to Chicago, though. Oh, oh I would, yeah, I would, yeah. I would, that might yeah. be a small. That'd be definitely. <laughs> yeah. but he's been talking about it. He funk yeah. actually. We and Claudia went down and got our haircuts there. I'm gonna yeah. put a little piece together to honor him for coming on and you know how we do. Like you're open and give him a little bit of uh, a nice yeah, intro. Dessert. We were there. He's a good dude. Yeah. Anyway, there's your tease, Claudio. Am I pressing the buttons tonight or? Is... Yeah. So do the don't do the do the uh, football one, not the mm -hmm. naggy one. Do the first okay, thing. we're going. They're, they're labeled. I got it. Oh, you, you got, got it. it. Right. Shane's yeah, gonna it. do it tonight. There you go. Take right. the take the comments down. Take all do the mute. comments down. Let me do mute here. Get okay. on the mute. Let one. me get the comment. There you go. All right, all you set. ready? You ready, Claude? Yes. Claudio the barber. Right, here we go. Olympics, and this is good defense. On one Wait, coverage. So listen. Well, Shul Douglas came over the here back. He was going for the ball. Might have been a little early, but you know, eh? let him play. No call. No foul. Look it out, both of you, all of you. The refs, everybody. Look Cut at you getting fired up. Yeah, what do you think, Shane? All right, you like that? I like, like it. That, I like, like the fire. Sure, like like the new oh, graphic you with go. these scissors. Yeah, Shane you know, did that, you know, right? Is that the rule? Oh, yeah, the graphic, you're right. Yeah, that, took, that was easily three minutes of my life that I contributed to Claudio's segment yeah. here today, putting <laughs> well, those the moving scissors it made, in it, it made it. It made it work. It made it work. And you did pull out the reality of the truth. The freaking tape don't lie right there. He's climbing over the back. The announcers have double standards. You could see I sensed Vilma, even though he did call us uh, truthfully in regards to Jalen Johnson. That was horrific. That was completely yeah. how How are you a broadcaster, a former football yeah. player, thinking, blaming Nick Foles for finding? You got to find the one. He did find the one on one. The guy came right through him in <laughs> interference. The whole opposite of what happens, happens in regards to that. It's unfortunate. So I totally agree with you. I wanted to punch Vilma. I was punching the pole in my basement because I was getting so fired up that there was no flag there. 
gets me crazy. If I, please, I was, please, please let's not say punching the pole in the basement. <laughs> 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 we just we we stay away from that one. Yeah, we take yeah, do that. we take bad football really hard here, cars. <laughs> so you know what, Phil? I was trying. Um, thanks, to, thanks, to COVID. But I was trying. I had a buddy who was going to try and get me to be a, a color commentary for uh, the Big Ten Network. Yeah. This year, and because I got tired of that, dude. That's literally why I got into sports broadcasting. Was because I got tired of hearing people. First of all, on the score and ESPN, they're, they're talking these guys, calling these guys bums. I'm like, wait a minute, when was the last time you did anything athletic and didn't pull your fucking hamstring? Okay, that's for starters. Secondly, you know, you're saying stupid stuff and you're getting paid for this. That exactly. was, I was like, no, 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 no. So that's that's really the, one of the biggest reason, no, the biggest reason. I got into sports broadcasting because I can give you a perspective as a player and a perspective as a coach. Okay, so I, I have a pretty well-rounded uh, opinion, and and to hear people like that, like Jonathan Vilma, you know, double talk, that right. that, that pissed me off. That pissed me off. That bothers me, and it helped. I mean, I get it. They, you know, they transition. You want to hear a former player, but damn, dude, just you know, it's, it's like we're asking the umpires in baseball. Just keep it consistent, man. That's all we're doing. Keep it consistent. Keep it 100. Keep it 100. Keep it. Exactly. Yeah, look at you. We didn't even get you. We got to get him to read. Give us a station idea. I almost forgot that tonight. Yeah, Shane. we'll do that before, before we, we go. But yeah. We'll go. We you go. ready for you ready for your. Uh, yeah, let's do it. I think this right. should be good. I, I, I put this together with music, too. I added my own music to this. Look so. at this. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I haven't yeah. seen any of little, these. Kids work little, pull uh, those comments down, Phil. Yeah. I don't have it. There we go. There you go. Mark Potash. Hey man, right, Mark, uh, how, how concerned say, are you about the offensive please, line? Please cut it out and, and how just say is it Leno by that, name. Considering that, you know, compared to other positions, even quarterback, you can't just make, you know, usually you can't just change one guy and, and solve it mm -hmm. and fix it. Yeah, we, we know that across the board on offense right now, there's there's different things that we can get better at, and um, that's everybody, you know, uh, my, myself included. And yeah, okay, let me show you how it's done. Hey, uh, this is Claudio the Barber from uh, Tape Never Lies Network. Uh, just want to follow up on that, and uh, I'll show you a video real quick, and then I'll have a question for you. So just check it out. I work out. I work out. I work out. I work out. Yeah, so as you can see there, that's Leno putting more effort in than he's done on any game this season. So. Where are you and the coaches at, and you know, are you guys thinking of maybe benching him at all, or what? What's going on? Uh, we we put a lot of stock into what these guys have done, you know, <laughs> up until now, and then again, a lot too with what our coaches feel and where they're at, and, and Coach Juan Castillo, where he's at, and it's right. all, all yeah. of us. Cut know, the fucking shit out and yeah. bench the motherfucker. <laughs> you had Cut your it own. Off. You're <laughs> acting now. You're making a. Him. I had to bring it. I had to bring it together. I told him. You told him. I had to bring it. I brought it. I brought it. Bro. Is, right? The production quality. I'm like, two in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. You was amazed me there, Cla I'm like, I don't remember this long fucking pause in this press conference at all. And I'm like, oh shit, this dude cut this all up. Like, you did it yourself. I'm learning. I have man. not I'm learning. seen this, Sean. <laughs> um, this is. This is what we do, like vulnerable and honest yeah. reaction. That I really said, I don't want to see things you it. can do with a Motorola Razor from 1998. <laughs> Claude stepping up. <laughs> He's giving Sam yeah, some yeah. Galaxy phones and uh, some light at the end of the yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. You better that, get an endorsement from them, Claude. You better get an endorsement from them, Bubba. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, but Shane for real, but for real, like, did, has right? Anybody actually? brought up Leno's name in a question. No. Because they, no. they brought up other players. They brought up Coward. They brought up, you know, other players. Have they actually brought this guy's name up so he has to address him, you know, by name? Nope. Look at that. No. I mean, so, you got to hold him accountable. You got to. But gotta, I, I, yeah. I told you what happens is, is a lot of people, because the Bears, you know, they, they know they run this town, and people are, are literally scared that they won't get um, credentials. They're, they're, they'll have their credentials taken away. And, you know, it, it's – but you're not doing that's not doing a, a service to the, the people who, who are reading what you're writing or, or listening to what you're saying because you want these are the questions that they want to they want to ask so you be the the, the mouthpiece for us and yes. ask the tough questions yeah. you get paid x amount of millions of dollars you're there for what 10 12 15 minutes max yeah. after a game you can handle the, you could you could take the bullets you could take the heat papa trust me you oh. can take the heat 
Listen, when the reporters pussyfoot with the questions, then the, the people, the, the coach is going to pussyfoot with the answer. Well, and he does kind of set a tone of like, I don't know about you guys. I got to look back at it again, but it was really weird how after the game, Shane, when he was like, he didn't want to talk about how bad his offense was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they well, it's, got, they got it's, that it's, message and they moved on to, No. Yeah, you came here to change this. You had Mitch. He's gone. The same problems with the run game and offense with Mitch are happening with your guy. So who's the one piece? You. The common denominator. Bingo. Yeah, there you go. The offensive line, too. So you, you have you're to, the coach. That's what you're putting out there. You have to make a change on the offensive line. Oh, my you God. Just, you have to. And I, I'm never going to buy the excuse that, well... It can get worse. Well, no, it's the worst. No, it's no. the worst it's ever been. Just like you say, it can it might get worse? It might get better. I mean, you don't. You don't let's know be a honest. person's heart. Let's tell. Hey, them. if we just get mediocre, that's going to be an improvement. I mean, let's be honest. If we get mediocre at offensive tackle, that's going to be an upgrade. So, yeah. <laughs> Paul give, does actually have teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Very good line. You guys in the chat have been killing it. I love you guys. Is there another cut it out? No, no. No, Okay. That's it. You guys have been killing it. Little bit of business. Obviously, I've told you about twice now about the Patreon channel. But also, this show always becomes a podcast. Bears Hour Live becomes a podcast now. You can find it on Shy City Sports. Just look for... The podcast app, whatever you're using, type in Keeping It 100, a Chicago Bears podcast. Also, you'll find Bears Hour Live there, and this little business will tell you everywhere you could find our podcast. Keeping It 100 can be found on all podcast streaming apps. iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Overcast, CastBox, Deezer, and finally, officially on Google Music and Podcast. It's Keeping It 100 with Phil and Shane. Oh yeah, Keeping It 100. You guys love it. We love you. Sean has been tremendous with us. We get into our next on our final segment, Shane's favorite segment, the shout out segment. Actually, we got to do bold Cherise, yeah. bold predictions and predictions. Holy shit. And if you have some questions, we really want to get to those too. If you have a question for Sean, throw it in the chat. We'll see it. Claudia will put it up. I know this show has been great. Obviously, cars, I love you. We'll get into the naggy stuff as we move forward. We'll see where you are later. And let me say this. Don't rag on my boy, Cars. He's one of the great guys. He's a good friend. He is just like everybody else on this panel will be the first guy to say, you know what? I was wrong. And, and that's why I respect this motherfucker. So anyway... I know he'll be saying that in a couple weeks, but anyway, let's move on to the next step. Let's move on to this. Bold predictions. And since we have a guest here, and I don't want anybody to steal his, so what we're going to do is a prediction. And last week I said uh, Cole Komet would score his first touchdown. That came to fruition. So two weeks in a row, the refs fucked me over with the Khalil Mack three sacks against Brady. He got two. He should have had three. They threw the roughing call. Cole Komet came through for me. So I'm on a roll, Claudio. Hopefully my boy, the super back. What do you got? Prediction, Bears, Rams, score, and then you're bold. Something, sacks, touchdown, whatever, player, get bench, whatever you got. Give us okay. a bold. All right, so here, here's here's my, my prediction. See, um Remember the Bears beat beat the Rams a couple of years ago and it was a little little cold here and, and oh, they yeah. were they were, you know, bitching and moaning like little little sissies. Like it was cold. If you're you're lucky, if we were in LA, it'd be a whole different story. Well, guess what? We're going to LA. And there's a whole bunch of people on this team who remember that. And I can guarantee you that they're gonna be remember they're gonna remember all this. If you if this was LA, we would have beat your ass. I think the Bears come out and they, they really put a game together. Uh, I think Nick Foles and that offense uh, get a little get on track a little bit. And I'm not putting up 40, but I think they I think they're going to uh, 
Um, 21 points to 24 points, I think, that offense is going to put up. Uh, so I, I say the Bears 20. An offensive explosion. Explo- in- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll feel, hey, they're in California. We'll feel the shock waves all the way over here, okay, <laughs> with that with that explosion that happening over there. But, no, I think, they, I think the defense might get one. I'm thinking – uh, I think the Bears put it together. I'd say um, 30, 20, 31 to like 24. I think they have. Maybe, no, they take that back. 31 17. I think the defense is going to really show out. And they, they, it'll be a penalty like the, the touchdown they scored um, last week is going to get them good field position. Uh, and my big, my bold prediction. Yes. My bold prediction for the week is. Yeah, let me think. I was thinking, and I had it, and I lost it. So give me one second. Um, it could come back to you if you want to pass. <laughs> yeah, give me give me a All second. Right, he's going. He wants a bold. <laughs> Claudio, yeah. give us your prediction and your bold prediction. Smoke weed every day. <laughs> 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 so I'll do, the, I'll do my bold prediction first. Is that all right? We do that. Keep it at a hundred. Go Keep ahead. Right. So my bold prediction is, when we're ahead in the fourth quarter at the end of the game, Nagy will actually run the ball on third down to kill the clock for once. Really? Yes. So we'll be all up, right. and he'll actually run the ball like he's supposed to. That's a bold a strategy, coach. Cotton. A bold we'll see if it pays off. Because it never fucking happens. So that's my bold prediction. And so obviously, I think we'll be winning. I think we'll win the game. I think it will be close. But I think our offense will show up too. So I think we're going to – I'm going to go 30 to 21. 30 21. Sean, what was your score again? 31 31, 17. 31 17. 31 17. 30 21. Claudio. I got – so I got my bold prediction. Go ahead. All right. I think the the, the, the guys are going to step up big time. I think that I'm telling you, this offense is really going to put it together, at least for this game. I don't know, and hopefully it catapults us moving forward. But I say we have a 300-yard passer, a 100-yard rusher, and a 100-yard receiver against this Rams team. Whoa. Nice. This is bold times three. That sounds so pretty. (laughs) I haven't seen that since Jeff Graham and Curtis Conway. Curtis Conway. Conway. (laughs) Grossman, Bernard Berrien, and Thomas Jones. Oh, Claudio oh, is the, the biggest Rex Grossman fan. Oh, I just want you to know. Grossman apologist. <laughs> he is a Rex Grossman apologist. We're going to have his, his own show. He's going to have his hands? own show. Yeah, tell He's us all about poster. him, Claude, real quick. Wrap real it up quick. in 30 seconds. <laughs> Give a bold Grossman story. Hurry up. A story? Well, what a you're feeling. real story. Walter Camp in Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I don't give a fuck. There you go, Shane. Just, it was gonna be a funny. It. it was gonna be a funny story. <laughs> we're actually. sure. We're sure it was. That's great. Save Nobody it. Nobody cares. We'll save, save it for, it for next week. Yeah. Save yeah. it for next week. He did, wait, wait. I will say that <laughs> as a Bear fan. Wait, as a Bear fan, he has brought us. He was the quarterback of the team that gave me the best experience I ever had was going to the Super Bowl. I was at that Saints championship game, and you can't say he didn't play good in that championship game because he did. All right. All right? right. I, I see mean, where your bias is. Can you at least him. admit that? We just went down 64 <laughs> listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Claudio loves some fucking gross food. I love him, man. Cars, give us your bold prediction. And I feel upset because I predicted four interceptions last week and the refs screwed me out of <laughs> two did. of I them. So, oh my God, I forgot about yeah, that. That's right. Yeah, that, that has me uh, quite concerned. But I'm, I'm sticking with it that there will be three more interceptions over uh, he got it at Jared uh, this week. <laughs> So I'll, I, I will expect actually Roquan for one of those and the safeties for the other two. Um, but I am, I am, I'm looking at a 20 to 13 bears win. I, uh, I don't expect it. None of these games that they've ever played have been high scoring the last two seasons. Uh, 
I'm concerned about Aaron Donald versus pick anybody on the offensive <laughs> line um, in, interior. <laughs> and so, you know, that's that's my biggest uh, my biggest concern. But I think uh, golf has been exposed, and I think that's what really gets us uh, that victory. Beautiful. Guys in the chat, if you have your score and your bold prediction, now's the time to share it because on this show, we actually could put you up and we can actually record your bold predictions like Zach Sullivan, the clock maker. Look at him. He's throwing 12-10 bears. Oh, God. So throw that's your gonna, That's going to be a fun BHL to cover the 12-10 to 10 game. Kofi Omahang. I hope I said your name right. Send yours, and Claudia will put them up there as we go and move next to Shane Marsaw. Your prediction and your bold prediction. Well, I'm obviously going to go with Chicago. I think they're, you know, the defense is legit. I think at some point they're going to get a little bit of a offensive showing like Sean was speaking about, but I'm – I'm going to say that the score that I have in my head is 21-17. Chicago wins to move to, to 6-1. and one. And I don't know how bold this is because the guy's a fabulous player, but I'm a big believer. You know, big-time players make big-time plays in big-time games, and we see it when the lights come on, Khalil Mack goes to work. So I'm picking a three-sack game for number 52. Should have went before this guy is all I, my bold predictions. <laughs> that Tate, look, is that Tate making the, the score prediction? Seven hundred. Every time I ask Phil's, when I ask Free. Phil's sons, when I go see the game with him, I ask Phil's sons what their prediction is every week, and they always yeah. say like ninety to zero. Or fucking 80 to zero. They're like, like Saturday Night Live, the, the super, super fans. Awesome. I mean, listen, and the super fans. They, yeah, yeah. three hundred seventy-four to three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. 2410. Look at Alex Acevedo. People getting it. One more prediction. I'm going to yeah. add another. Oh, another, another bold? Uh, it's not bold, but you're going to see another good game for Mario Edwards, who's a very underrated player on this defense. Oh, yes. I highlighted him in yep. the Patreon. That's not too bold. Patreon too bold. version of The Tape Never Lies this week. So. Head over there, www.thetapeneverlies.com. Sign up. You get in there. You're going to get invited. I had to say this. I forgot. I'm sorry. You get invited to the fa- private Facebook group, and you could post in there, and we'll have live shows like this that are for Patreon members only, as well as on the YouTube private YouTube page. All of that will be explained. Go over there. Sign up. My bold, my my prediction for the score, uh, I hate to say it, I'm here with cars, and I look at this offensive line and their performance against the Carolina Panthers, and I'm nervous. I'm nervous about this team traveling, and I'm nervous about how Nagy is going to call this game on primetime. Is he going to be what Sean called him, the smartest, I got to be the smartest man. I'm going to come in the inverted bone, and we're going to run option on one play. And then the next play, we're going to go into T formation, and we're going to do something cute for Hallis, George Hallis, and, and Mrs. McCaskey up there. Instead of recognizing, get a fucking fullback in there, run the Bob play three times, and then action game off of it down the field so this offense could work to where it needs to be. That's my concern. So with that, I, my gut is worried about that defensive front with Aaron Donald and company. My heart is with the Bears, so I'm going with my truth. My truth is 20, it's going to be a nail biter. 20 to 18, the Chicago Bears on the leg of none other than Cairo Santos to end the game yes. going out there and winning the game for the Chicago Bears. It's going to be two defensive battles there, especially on the road. If the Bears were home, I'd feel a lot more comfortable about this football game. But that travel and that offensive line, I really think that's going to happen. I was going to go three sacks from Khalil Mack. But I'm going to say this. My bold prediction is Eddie Jackson finally gets that defensive touchdown this week. He's been screwed over, what, three times now? Three times? Three times. Twice in that game. (laughs) 
once in the other game. So it, he would have had if if Akeem didn't pick up that fumble. Oh, Eddie Jackson. Yeah, see the fat guys got it. They got they yeah. can't. They need to turn yeah. all the droppers. We yeah. I, when I told my guys that I'm like, look, yeah. if there's two of you, and it's a D lineman and, and and a linebacker or a safety. A DB, let the DBs go. You turn around, you're the blocker. Okay, you you your fat ass ain't making it down 40, 50 yards. No, no, no. no. I go celebrate it. with him in the end zone afterwards. I said it right away. I'm like, right, Claudio. I go, oh, just oh, yeah. let Eddie Jackson yeah, pick yeah. it up. We're going yep. in the house. Then we don't got to worry about Nagy and the offensive line and all yep. the other drama. We just pick the ball up, score, and everything opens up. And I think, from what I've seen, this team, the Bears. Kind of the whole team feeds off the defense. Everything's going through the defense. I know mm -hmm. I made a comment in the tape, never lies. I feel like Pagano has his guys where Nagy should have his offense right now. And if it does, to Shane's point, if 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 Cars's guy turns this around and they become a functional, just even middle of the road offense, this team could go very far in the playoffs, especially when Dustin's showing four and twelves for the visions and shit. This team has a special defense. So what it we did it. We got it all done, Claudio. You gotta get that shout out music. Is there yeah, anything else? It. Oh before we do that, we gotta get Sean Sierra's station ID. So when we put this at the midway point, when we go through the bye, I'm gonna put all our guests together. And we're going to have a nice promo for the Tape Never Lies Network. So I'm going to put you on the spot here. And I'm going to isolate on you, Sean. And you got to show us your chops here. Take the comment down. So I'm going to give you the script. You're going to say who you are, where you're, you know, where you're at. And then you're going to come out. And you're you can listening. even give your height. You can give your height. Five eleven. I can say five eleven. I can yeah. say five eleven. Yes. <laughs> Shut the front door. Yes, you actually are five eleven in my book. Don't listen to anyone named Chris. Never listen to anyone Chris with the last name S. They're always worried about your height. Anyway, say, take the banner down. I don't know if you could do that, Claudio. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Got it. And then uh, yeah. you're listening to my guys on the whatever best network, the Tape Never Lies Network. So, Sean Sierra, Sports Zone Chicago, and you're listening to Phil Shane. You don't have to name everyone. You're listening to my guys on the Tape Never Lies Network. How about that? Got sure. it? Mm -hmm. Let's look right into the camera. Hey, Papa. <laughs> Do I make love to the camera? Do I make love to the <laughs> what kind of Zoom call is this? <laughs> you want the countdown? Oh, yeah. Okay. Ready? Three. Give me the Janet Jackson one. Three. <laughs> two. One. What's up, guys? It's your boy, the Superback, Sean Sierra from Sports Zone Chicago. And you're listening. I'm listening to my guys on the Tape Never Lies Network. There you go. One. Oh, oh, we're wow. kidding. <laughs> we, had, we had to give him grief. <laughs> the Tape Never was that, Lies was that good? Access. Was that good? Do I need to take it? Was, that was good. No, it we'll was take good. it. Okay, I felt Unless a little you, weird. If you don't feel comfortable with no, it. No, I, I didn't feel comfortable on that one. So then do uh, another one. I'm right, always about what you feel. Let me get your factor back up. There you go. Three, two, one. Hey, guys, it's your boy, the Superback Sean Sierra from Sports Zone Chicago, and I'm listening to my guys on the Tape Never Lies Network. Yes, you're, you're right. Sure. I'm glad you did Killed it again. It. I'm glad you did. Claudio's glad you did it yes. again. Told all access. Tape never lies. All access. Look at this guy. I'm going to drop the he, pen. Drop the there you go. <laughs> we didn't have a mic, but we do have our last segment of the show. And we, look at this. We've gone three hours of uninterrupted, just straight fun show. Look at Cherie, one of our super... We call them 100 Crews. We call them the 100 Crew. One of our super fans, super people there on the 100 Crew. 
And we always music, give right? you can hear our, music? Yeah, you can okay. turn it down just one right. because we love the hip hop. We don't stop. We riggedy riggedy rock. Look at that. <laughs> I should freestyle someday, but not today. For cars. I'll do it for do it for cars. We're not Claude, ready for that. We always no. have a guest when we do have a guest on in the Spencer Strong shout out segment. Hashtag Spencer Strong, one of our own 100 crew son has struggled with brain tumors. We here at the Tape Never Lies Network ask people to support childhood cancer. It's overlooked. It's totally not cool. So if you have it in your heart, hashtag it up Spencer Strong. That's the way we know who you are and you are 100 crew, 100 true. Anyway, Sean, do you have anyone you want to shout out tonight? I want to shout out my guys over at Sean and Maya in the morning on Sports Zone Chicago. That's uh, my co-host Maya Kai, uh, my producer Ivan, who you guys uh, met. Ivan. Yes, yeah, so I want to shout out my crew over there, and uh, and we're looking forward to having you back um, soon, baby. Soon, soon. Absolutely. Talking yeah. some football, baby. Some real football with some. So I'm not talking to a meathead. What do we talk about? Jay sucks. Jay Cutler sucks. Why? Because he sucks. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> that, I got the go. end of it. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> oh, that's a good shout out, Claudio. Well, like always, I got to shout out my wife. You know, I need her to be happy. So, happy wife, happy life. Shout out my wife and my kids. They're the best. So, I got to shout out this guy. He changed his name on YouTube yes. to Billy Stamps. Okay, because what happened was. He actually put a timestamp on our show right here, Keep It In 100, and he timestamped everything we talked about throughout the show. So somebody wants to go on, yeah, and and then Phil comments and says, oh, we need to hire you. And then I say, you need to change your name to Billy Stamps. And he changes his fucking name to Billy Stamps now. (laughs) So on YouTube, his name is Billy Stamps. And hopefully he's going to keep doing it. I think he's going to keep doing it. So we're going to shout him out for sure. Um, uh, Jeremy Plzinski, right? Did I say that right? Plzinski. Yeah. Did I say that right? Yeah, okay. Sounds he, good. He's a man. He's, he you know, did he's try man. to tell me how to pronounce it over the phone. And I, <laughs> sorry, Jeremy. I fucked it up. I forgot. How do you think his seven ex-wives feel? <laughs> 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 Working on that number eight, I think yeah. we might have it by the end of the show. It doesn't work, you try, try again, I guess. So, That's right. got to shout him out because, I mean, he made us these, these these mugs. He made us, I think you guys have them there. Um, you know, oh, he, yeah, he does dope, so much on, the, on social media and it does a lot okay. for everybody oh, here. Mine's so. behind me, but yes. Yeah, I got I to gotta grab that. mine. It's still at Phil. Claudio's so is shout here in the box. Grammar and spelling yeah. are important. So, I got a few in the, the chat, the too. Pull the beat back. You forgot. Oh, under bad. pressure. Oh, shit. That's okay. Well, I was talking, so. You, you I'll can just handle mute it. it. Claudio's mute playing it. a commercial for erectile dysfunction. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out. So. Hold on, let me skip the first <laughs> When the moment hits you, <laughs> make sure yeah. you're ready. <laughs> it causes <laughs> this problem. It causes Can we get to problem. the ball shaving yeah. part that every other Chicago podcast is you doing? You don't need right people now, running too. around with yeah. babies. Yeah. <laughs> all right, it's a different song. <laughs> it's, a di- it's a different song. Is that all right? We'll leave that. Oh, there he is, the daddy. It's, it's just. All, right, so all of a sudden, the mood went back oh, into like it's jazz nightclub. I don't know how to go back. So this is Light 100.7. I'm your guy, Draft Dr. Phil, and this is a little see. Maybe I can go pillow back. talk with Claudio. No, it's all right. <laughs> no, I can't go back. Okay. All right. Well, so Just finish quick, your so shout out. Well, quick. I'm trying. Switch it so when trying. Cars is going. All right. So, listen. So, Alex H. in the comments. He said his birthday was October 19th. My daughter's birthday was just October 19th, so I shot you out for that. Alan Brancher, he uh, he was helping me out. I had an echo earlier, so he helped me out, so I'll shout him out. And Marco C, he's an Italian-Canadian. Fan yes. of the show, an Italian-Canadian. Forget about it, so how you that, doing? That, that, yeah, and nobody's that. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's very nice, and he's a Bear fan. He's a fan of ours, so. There Blame Canada. Always. Yeah. Those are my shout outs. I'm good. Good right, job. Me fix the music. Fix the beat right, for Cars. Cars is a big hip hop connoisseur. 
Are you Biggie yes. or Are you Biggie or Pac, Sean? Everybody, when they look at me, goes, "Yeah, that's a hip hop connoisseur." Yeah. Casper the Ghost is who I'm going to be for my music choices. That's that's for sure. Casper. <laughs> Sean, are you Biggie or Tupac? Biggie and Pac is a super duper duper close second. Oh, but Biggie, you know what? You're give me, a, give me a Biggie. He, you know what? Because he, because Pac was more political, and Pac. Don't get me wrong, he's, he's bad, crazy. But Biggie, his lyrics were were just kick ass, dude. Kick oh, ass. Yeah. And then there's no disrespect to Pac by any stretch. I'm right there with you. We we try to ask every guest that question every time they come on. Cars, I think you're Pac, right? Cars. I am. Yes. Yeah, surprised yeah. by that. You are the, no longer a hip hop connoisseur. <laughs> if that's I'm all it takes, joking. I got some hot takes on some other things that we're going to relate to. So let's, you know, it's from between my head coach decisions and my rap music, you know, we'll just keep piling them on up. It's no problem. <laughs> Who are you shouting out tonight? So first and foremost, my four-year-old who threw an absolute shit fit when I tried to leave the room today. So I apologize for being late, uh, but working late, late, late wife and trying to put a kid to sleep who uh, was not having it. So thank you, Maisie, for ruining the evening. Um, I always have to shout out my other child, Dustin, for keeping me sane <laughs> during all of this. I'm, I'm flattered beyond flattered uh, that he has changed his screen name. Uh, it, it's illegitimate, uh, as illegitimate as it comes, but, uh, you know, it is there. But no, I think, you know, I say it kind of every week, but I enjoy the interactions with everyone on social media, on Twitter. It's a lot of fun to, to talk with everybody here other than Chubbs, so. Thanks everybody, and and that's it. There you go. I love this dude. Appreciate you jumping on, always with us, cars, bringing a different perspective uh, on football and the Bears, and always backing it up with facts and humor. That's how we keep it here. Shane, your favorite part of the show. I know you got a long list. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. I'm going to shout out some of the new uh, patrons that we picked Beautiful. up during this show. I'm gonna during the show? Yeah, Look during the show. Carter Carter. Carter Crazy Carter. Name. Sydney Audain. Jesse. Paul Penzgowski. Abe Espinoza. Reed Weber. Oscar Lopez. And Lopez. Jared. Maybe I could freestyle. Forhelm. You guys got some crazy names. Throw in J the forehead. Yeah, Jason Fleming, Mike O'Brien, J.D. Kobus, and Asher Benjamin are the Asher. guys that I'm going to shout out, the new patrons. And Phil, Look you uh, had told me to make up a little yeah, thing I for gotta, this guy. Yeah, I got to shout this out. Yeah. I told his wife, she, well, listen, I got to shout this guy out. Can you take that banner out? Anthony Walker. Let me just say this a little bit about him. Not only is he a a Patreon member, but he's also been in Shane and my corner since the beginning. And he's always sharing, promoting us. I wanna wish you and your wife a happy 12th anniversary. I know Plashinsky almost fell off his chair because yeah. he's through eight wives now. My boy, Anthony, proud of you and your wife i just want to let you know we love you but not as much as she loves you we appreciate your support here and really happy anniversary to you guys and we thank you for being a loyal patreon charter member and proud to be a part of that 100 crew look at that you even get your own his hat like steven yeah <laughs> he looks like he is steven. a hip-hop connoisseur look at him yeah uh. That, that that's for you, that Shane. You pop all day long. I'm sorry. That was Biggie. That says, no, that says too That pop. hat says Biggie, all. Are you kidding? Oh, yeah. No, the face. The face. Oh, the face. All in. Yeah. Cute oh, okay. kid. He is a kid. beautiful kid. Yeah, beautiful kid. So happy 12th anniversary. Shane took a lot of my shout outs. Look at him. Yeah, he needed a do-rag if he was Pac, man. He needed a do-rag if he was <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Little bandana. The back bandana. Remember the back bandana? Yep. 
Yeah. Like Aunt, like Aunt Jemima tied up right here. Listen, I have to start my shout outs with none other than the guy that's on the show right here, Mr. Sierra. Bring in the heat. That's that closer speed. What's that dude from the Yankees throwing 105 for miles? <laughs> oh, for all the Chapman. Yeah. That dude throwing, you're bringing it just like him. I can't thank you enough to, for coming on and joining us. The chat room was a flutter with you. I think you picked up some new followers on Twitter. I see them saying I'm following love, this guy on Twitter. In the, in the chat room. I did. Thank you very much, bro. I did. I picked up quite a few people. Thanks for having me on, brother. Probably. Oh. Phil Freeze. Oh. Oh, yeah. All right. All right, man. Well, yeah, Sean, man, appreciate <laughs> you doing overtime with us, man. That was that was a lot of fun. We, you're the first guy that we've uh, let go, and then you gave the thumbs up and came back and stayed for the rest of the show. So we love that. I came to work, baby. I came to I came like the Bulls. I want to punch the time clock and bring my hard hat and lunch pail. <laughs> there you go. No oh, Jim Boylan references. You get out right now. You get out just like Jim Boylan. I'm sorry. You can't make this up, right? In the shout out, something goes on with StreamYard. Just like... That's my intention. Actually, I programmed Did you do that? It. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. That it takes us 45 minutes, so that was, that was kind of Never... the goal. Uh... Anyway, I'm starting to I, think Leno has something to do with something streaming. Leno, I think Leno and Nagy. It's not man, my internet speed at all. It. it just started yeah. freezing. I want to shout out a lot of the Patreon members that have just shown such support. Joseph White, Dino T the Great. I always see Dino on YouTube commenting. He's like, I just got to subscribe to get more of this. Jose Casaquilo, Miles. Olson, Chris Miller, Kenny Kane, Cody Khan, Mathis Fisher, Grady Jackson, Rob Turville, Mr. 300, Chris Jackal. He's been in the chat all night. Eric, Michael, Zach Sullivan, Ben Sullivan, Josh E. Bringing the, the, did you see these things behind me? Sean, one of our fans made the draft, Dr. Phil, called it, uh, yeah, Shane I got has one. I'm over saving there. mine for my new studio, but yeah, they're pretty. They gave us the. You like made these glass. Oh, they're like dope. plexiglass. Yeah, they're so good. strong, like a hockey glass. It's, yeah, look at that. Oh, that's dope. And mine's up there. That's dope as hell. Yeah. Tape never lined. Oh, I see it. Yeah, see yeah. it up yeah. there. Then I got one draft doctor Phil over there. See Phil's it? so short, you can't only just see his hat. <laughs> 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 anyway i see you guys frank carano you guys have been so instrumental in what we're doing and i'd be remiss if i didn't shout out uh our team the swag team led yeah, by chris sandlin heather sandlin alex acevedo you see him in the chat sneaking like a, a smoker. He's going on a smoke break. No, he's going to watch the tape never lies during his break. That's what that's what it's all about. And uh, Claudio already shouted out Jeremy controlling. I call him the bouncer of the Facebook page. Just great dudes. Chris Schubert, I saw you in there. And I will continue. And I promise this. This was a lot, it was difficult to continue to break down this tape the way we do and bring you these kind of shows a three an hour and what 29 minute show is that where we're at 319 yeah, almost 30, at 20 just bringing it all of you guys i want to shout you guys out and i want to definitely shout out my wife for everything she does in supporting me in this this dope studio i have in my garage Chris Jackal actually built. And I'm going to take you on the tour. Anyway, Monday night, we'll be live on BHL. Don't miss that. Any parting words before we end this show? Any Why final questions? Claudio's got the commercial going oh, again. Oh, let me get this. You gotta be a, you gotta be a good person, sir. First time, first time. Smoke weed every day. Smoke weed every day. 
I never get to use these nice little. Can you take the comment down? Let's use these. Let's Hold test on. these out. Thank you, Kenneth, for keeping it 100. So no one's taking that comment down. No, I was getting the music going. Oh, oh man. Someone take. There you go. There's a nice, cool. There's Claudio. Look at him. Look at these cool things. We got to start using these. Cars. Bears Nerd. Follow Bears Nerd on Twitter. Yeah. Anyway, keep it at 100. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Shy City. Check out them. Go on their message boards. Again, check out their podcast and check out my boy Sean Sierra. I'll be coming on their show soon. Always have a nerd alert. Shout out to the... Zero. Point zero crew. I, <laughs> no, I don't know what happened out, there. I was shouting out the 0.0, .0 crew. Oh, I'm know. sorry. <laughs> All right, don't worry about it. Anyway, have a great night. We always end the show like... I had a, where is it? Where's the ender? Here it is. This has been a Shy City Sports presentation and a Tape Never Lies Network production. Keeping it 100. Thanks for tuning in to the Tape Never Lies Network.